Okay, hack the planet, info dump, Saturday morning at a reasonable time, cartoons. <laughs> um, so this game is a hack of Blades in the Dark. Who hasn't played Blades in the Dark before? You haven't played? I've okay. read a, a bunch of it, so I'm pretty familiar with it, but I haven't actually played. Okay, that's that's fine. So, <laughs> yeah, dude, I've only played hacks of Blades. Good, that's how I like it. Um, so in this game, we're going to be using the core framework of Blades, which means that you all will be living in a mega city that is um, basically a powder keg ready to, to blow. All these factions inside of it have their own machinations. They're trying to get something that they want, and so do you. As a new tier, uh, tier zero gang, but still tier, <laughs> you have a little bit of power. Um, you're trying to claw back power from the other groups of factions in the city, or... Uh, possibly subvert other things. We can talk about that later, but maybe your ultimate goal is to subvert a mega corporation. And the way that you would do that would be by subverting and getting to the other factions that are affiliated with them and taking back power that way. But um, the core conceit of the game is that you're all, you don't have to be bad people, but you're all like part of an underground. And what that looks like in this game is that everybody who is a part of this massive mega city called Shelter One, which is divided into districts, of which you start in the green zone called The Roots, and that is the refugee district. So it's packed full of people, uh, more people than they, of course, thought to build it for have arrived and continue to arrive. So it's, if you think of the original Blade Runner with packed streets and it's a little bit grimy, dirty, um, that's a that's a good aesthetic to go for here, uh, except that since you're all packed full of climate refugees, it's not Orientalism and Asian culture primarily. It's all cultures and um, the shops and signage and all that kind of stuff would be reflective of that. So um, you would make that mental tweak in your head for Blade Runner um, streets. And everybody who is in the shelter has consumed uh, food and water from the main corporation called Nourish. And basically they're really sly, they think. They put nanites in their water and food and basically that's what puts all the citizenry on the grid. But what makes you part of the underground in this setting is that you've hacked your nanites to go off grid. So you're literally part of an underground ground underworld but it also puts you um maybe not in harm's way but the law is looking out for you they refer to you in a pejorative as uh glitches in the system so you could imagine like a blade runner type person called tracers in these settings are looking for people like you as well as if you look on your character sheet where heritages are there are instead um roots and your root is how you came to shelter one by which way so a tipper is ironically the the first one and it's it's a also a pejorative in the setting it's somebody who contributed to massive climate shifts which led to shelter one being constructed so all of the landscape around shelter one have been radically shifted it's not like i can tell you hey you're this is like where Toronto used to be or whatever, because climate change has taken place and radically changed the landscape and flooding occurred. The boundaries of what we would call North America or wherever you are have shifted a lot. You could be in the middle of a continent, continent, but bordering like the North Atlantic or something like that. Right. But because there is no more um, internet and data uh, to get, you're unsure of where you are and the corporations like it like that. They control all, all information. And that is another pillar of shelter one information. So there's three corporate councils that sort of rule the city. Nourish already talked about that. They kind of supply all food. They're kind of like the Wallace Corporation of Blade Runner 2049. They hacked food and uh, rice and all that kind of stuff and the water to allow citizenry to survive, but control them via that way. Information controls literally all information. So if you wanted to hack something in this game to get info, 
you'd you'd have to like actually hack uh, hack a structure of some kind, or alternatively, sometimes you can hack the existing satellites above. Um, but it's always a risky thing because information controls that stuff as well. And the final pillar of, of Shelter One is called safety. And uh, as you can imagine, they are the people that employ sentinels, which in if you read Blades in the Dark, they're like the blue coats. So there's sort of like the boots on the ground uh, police force. There is the tracers that are basically the Blade Runners hunting down tippers and underground people to imprison them. And there's auditors in between them, which are the people that are looking to, um, they, they literally are like investigators that send the tracers and the sentinels to where they're going. They, they are in like investigators, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much the nitty gritty of it. You, each district for this mega city is as big as a normal citizen, uh, um, city. So it's like, uh, probably like a couple million people. And we know that two of the districts, the green district and the red district, the green one is the one that you start in called the roots colloquially. Uh, it borders the North Atlantic and has a massive uh, basin shaped thing where the porters of the city um, use heavy lift ships to harpoon icebergs and bring it to the basin for drinking water where nourish processes it, infects it with nanites and people drink it and such. There's still um, streams and rivers and stuff like that, that um, get um, what you call it? There, there's streams and and lakes and rivers and stuff like that that feed into Shelter One, but it's not enough to to um, make up for all the water distribution that the city needs, and so they need the the porters. So, um, yeah, just like in Blades, think of it as your uh, scoundrels, right? You're like negotiating spaces not um, that the law is uh, pursuing you for and, and whatnot. And um, your crew is largely going to be the thing that centers your fiction on what you want to do specifically. But all of the playbooks are geared towards uh, those specific things. So I think that will be the main things. Does anyone have any questions? So is the first thing we're going to figure out then which crew we want to be and then pick playbooks based on what that crew is? It's up to you. Sometimes people create characters and then crew. Other people do crew and then characters. Uh, what do you guys feel? The two available crews are Clippers, a street gang on motorcycle, think Akira, and Cleaners, mercenaries for hire, think like every cyberpunk thing ever, basically. <laughs> I'm good with either of them. The The three playbooks that I was looking at for me that all sound interesting are the Edge, the Torque, and the... What's the last one? The, the Quirk. Okay. So the Quirk, Torque, and Edge are the three that I was kind of looking at. And I can see them playing in either of those play uh, crews really easily. So. Um, yeah. Anybody else have favorites? Um... I find that doing the like deciding what crew to go for, then do character creation, then do actual crew creation, can be helpful. Sure. So what crew because do you have? A, we have a theme, then we can do the character creation, and then we find out the details about the what ties us together. Sure. So do you guys want to be an Akira style gang or mercenaries for hire? So it's essentially. Yeah. Uh, what is it in Blade's terms, if you're familiar? I think the street gang for hire would be like the Bravos, I think, right? They're like the ruffians. And mercenaries would be like assassins, if you're looking for the allegories for the Blades game. I think I would lean toward cleaners, but Clippers sounds kind of interesting too, in a different way. So cleaners just feels like it's more like can fit more general ideas and that kind of thing where clippers is probably a little bit more specific so that was just my thought but either way i'm totally cool the main difference i think is is what like what we are rewarded for if we're yeah. cleaners we're rewarded for 
making uh, successful accidents, disappearance, murder, or ransom operations happen. Yeah. And Clippers, yeah. it's battle, extortion, sabotage, and smash and grab operation. Yeah. So chances are you'd be more of the bad guys, I think. Well, you'd both be bad, but this one would be outright, especially if you're extorting people. You're probably extorting, you're always going to be extorting people above you, but it depends how well you, that sits with you, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, Clipper sounds like um, get in fast, wreck stuff, and get out. Yeah. Well, or... cleaners is more professional. <laughs> yeah. yeah and you're, looking, you're looking to like start fights with other factions, essentially, with the Clippers, right? It, well, if you choose battle, I guess you don't have to choose that one, but yeah. I'm drawing more towards cleaners, but. Um, that's just because I don't, I can't really like picture clippers. So I'm also interested in finding out what that is, what that looks like. Let's just go with cleaners. Let's pick it and do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. And then, so now you'll choose, uh, characters then to fit that archetype. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so just uh, know that your hunting grounds, which is you get um, a bonus to gather information and an extra downtime action when you're doing things specifically geared towards either if you choose accident, disappearances, murder, or ransom. So it really does benefit you to gear your fiction towards that, but it's by no means restrictive to only those things. I was looking at the Haunt playbook. With, was there anyone else thinking that? Do Which it. one? Take it. The Haunt. I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Okay. So we've got a Haunt, and Yoshi has three favorites that aren't those. Mm -hmm. Mike or Matthias? Or Matthias, is it? Uh, it's Matthias, but. Matthias. Yeah, don't don't worry about it, please. Um. I so I have like a general idea of like the personality of my character, like mm -hmm. of my character, and it fits pretty well into edge, dark lens, or fuse. <laughs> um, so <laughs> if there's, I'm happy to fit into any of those. Whatever you want to uh, pick is fine for me. Beyond that. Um. Okay, Matthias, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I was thinking somewhere along the lines of potentially gearhead, but could lean towards torque or lens in that way. Cool. I'm gonna both pick edge because both of you guys said torque, so I'm gonna just be the edge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and you wanted specifically a gearhead type thing, so the torque, or. Yeah, but but what I'm envisioning could also be the lens. I'm, I'm, oh. Let me look at the uh, tricking or violence. Yeah, if you want to be the torque, uh, you're welcome to pick it, uh, Mike. Otherwise, I probably will. Um, if, if you pick it, I'm completely fine with being the lens. I think the most important thing to look at is uh, XP trigger and what kind of items you get. Yeah, I think that would be wise. It's kind of weird. And yeah, so if you want to be doing the uh, the gearhead stuff, technical skill is in the torque, yeah. and the lens is more like violence and or tracking and violence, right? So yeah, it's it's more the sniper kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I'd settle on the torque, or how do you feel? Mike? It feels like where you're leaning. I would go fuse, I think, is where I'm leaning at this point. OK. Yeah. yeah, we need someone to actually infiltrate and open the doors from the inside. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, cool. OK, so let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
So an important thing to note is the root. Um, you'll notice that in addition to struggling with your vice and traumas, like in Blades, if you struggle with your root, uh, then you also get XP, which is like, if I specifically bring in fiction that oppresses you, uh, you get XP for it. So it helps a little, maybe. <laughs> um, but otherwise, it's just... It's sort of, if you could picture it colloquially when you're speaking to individuals in the green zone or, or the roots. Uh, since everybody is a climate refugee and you're basically, unless you're a tipper, you're probably second generation people within Shelter One, telling people where your, your heritage and stuff was is like a little bit, like they're not really sure what you're talking about. Whereas if you tell people what your route is, how you got there, that's the kind of information that they're looking for from you more. Um, so how you would express your heritage and background that whatever you choose is putting in flavorful um, scenes about you um, talking about your heritage or your background. So since everybody's packed together, and culture is kind of being a little bit scrubbed away. You could say things like um, talking about your family's heritage and cooking and uh, what clothes you're wearing, stuff like that. That that would be XP triggers for hitting on your background and heritage. Um, and then the root is more for the other side of like how you're being oppressed as well as telling people where you're from. So if you choose unknown, are unaware of how you got here, or you're withholding that information from other people. And let's see. So you would choose your route, choose your background, choose your vice. And then when we get to action dots, uh, let me know and I'll explain that as well. You talked a little bit about the, the tipper route. Do you have explanations of the other ones like Grasshopper Foundation? Web oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't say. OK, yeah. yeah. So uh, gra <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grasshopper means that you came here um, via land. Foundation means that you have been a part of Shelter One since its inception, like your labor that was growing it or whatever you want. Wet means that you came by water, usually from the east, probably across the North Atlantic, something like that. And uh, forged means that you actually came from a community south of Shelter One. There's like a large swath of land south of Shelter One that has a whole bunch of communities that are called forged because they have had to deal with acts of God on their own and are sort of forged in it kind of thing. Right. They... they uh, e in the book, there'll be numerous communities, all with varying um, climates that they've had to deal with and have like some sort of human ingenuity to have dealt with that kind of stuff. So like flooding, uh, freezing, uh, all these different kind of climates. And they're kind of going to be set pieces for climate fiction in the book that people can explore. So you could have also come from one of those places uh, to the city. And then unknown is, yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I thought I explained that. <laughs> oh. And when you're choosing your vice, um, while when you're on jobs, we'll see you as being pretty hyper competent people doing jobs. And you can use flashbacks as a means to accomplish the competency, but it costs you stress. And when you to de stress in this game during downtime, you'll be indulging in a vice. And it's your sort of stress relief, pressure valve, that kind of thing. So when you're selecting faith, gambling, luxury, obligation etc just keep that in mind it should be something that you find really interesting because chances are at least one or two downtimes you'll need to indulge it so don't pick something that you're like not wanting to see on screen so to speak
So we're just here. grabbing root background vice. Yeah, for now. And then okay. we'll, you can choose your special ability as well. But action dots are a little bit different in this game too. So I'll explain that when everybody gets to it. Okay. And um, right. yeah, just grab a whatever playbook that you want and fill it out. The nice thing about this, these sheets on roll 20 is that you can pretty much customize almost everything on it except for the actual actions. So we'll just have to make the alleg like alleges actions on here. Uh, but otherwise, you can pretty much modify a custom or input all the information that we would need, which is nice. So, uh, Fraser. Yep. Um, Tipper, somebody who started the, the whole thing. Grasshopper, somebody who moved here. Foundation was born here. What came from somewhere else? Forged was what? Uh, communities outside and okay, then cool. basically yeah came from there after uh foundation doesn't mean that you were born there but it could have it just means that you or your family okay are foundational to it like you started building the shelter got it yeah i am totally forged and i'm think if i'm doing underworld could that totally be like um just like general crime and thing like that i think uh my character is probably involved in underground fighting is how they became a good fighter cool yeah i'm down for that cool so i'm gonna put underworld sure is my character sheet Struat jagoon right now uh yeah i guess so okay. they, I they, when i created them they just do random names. yeah I just didn't, if that was somebody else's that they were working on. Yeah, it looks like the other ones are claimed. So just let me know when you're ready for action dots. I'll give my spiel on that. I am. I can talk a little bit about my character if people want to know a little bit about me. Sure. Cool. So I am uh, Kathleen uh, Karstas. Uh, my alias is Cross. Uh, she, so uh, female pronouns, uh, is athletic, muscular, stout woman with a, like a short, dark uh, mohawk that like even if it, there's nothing, no product in it, it doesn't come down past her eyes. So like she never can get like her vision obscured from it. Um, and she's called Cross because um, at one point she has like a scar that you can see like on the left side of her face um, that would be like a scar where something opened up, but she got a tattoo to basically turn it into like the very anime like Star Cross like uh, tattoo. So like it looks like that, although that's not what the original scar looked like. She's like, fuck it, I don't want that scar. I want something that looks more badass. Um, so that's what she's got. And she's got like light brown skin, um, but um, I think she's probably like medium height, so probably like five eight five nine. Um, but again, um, like heavy set for that height, um, like muscular and strong. Ooh. What uh, starting oh. move did you pick or um, ability? I didn't actually pick that yet. I'm going to, oh, but. Uh, okay. Uh, she is forged, so like she's from the uh, the area around, um, and then like I said, uh, got into like underground fighting and gambling, um, and that's how she got good at doing this. That is also her vice; is that's where she makes a bunch of money, and then usually ends up losing it all to gambling, either betting on other people's fights or gambling in other ways. Do you bet on your own fights? Uh, I do not bet on my own fights. Or at least I haven't been caught yet. Tricky. Okay. 
I have some ideas for my character, and actually, I think it plays off of your character really well, Yoshi. Um, if you want to hear right now, <laughs> um, I was going to use the name from the generated character sheet because they're very good. So this is Gabraish, and they them pronouns. They are grasshopper root, so they moved into the city. Um, <clears throat> and I, with the Haunt playbook, there were so many interesting things, but I think that I went with um, underground backgrounds also. And I was thinking that Gabraish works as like a tattoo artist. There's a really interesting like contact on one of the other sheets called a data tattooist. I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. Um, so I think they work in something like that. And I think um, if we want to like tie the characters together a bit, Yoshi, maybe um, I hooked you up with whoever did the scarification for you or something like that. I think that'd be neat. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. And I really wanted to do the haunt special ability, Fraser, but I went with the hum <laughs> instead. I can't decide really. They're all good abilities for haunt. They're so interesting. Yeah, yeah, I really like Haunt because it's something that in games people seem to miss a lot about hacker culture, right? That it mm -hmm. is a subculture. So I made I made the subculture Haunt so you know what a Haunt is, <laughs> which, yeah. So I think it'll be, it'll be cool. And a data tattooist, basically, I actually got it from a really cool book called Data Runner where everyone in uh, they work for like different corporations in that one but basically they have a tattoo and within the tattoo there's like a subdermal uh, package so people can upload and download information from those tattoos and they have to literally like heart like parkour to their destinations um, to get it uploaded and downloaded and they call it their wing because every tattoo is usually a different kind of bird so yeah, it's pretty. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, maybe they do like data tattoo stuff and then also like actual tattoo stuff and then presuming that moves through the underworld. I <laughs> think that, that works. Oh, yeah, it's definitely underworld. Um, mm. And it's highly competitive, and other gangs and corporations and stuff like that are always trying to intercept these runners, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. That's and it doesn't have to be a. Like in the book, it's a, a bird and stuff like that. Mm. that but in the in this, it could be whatever you like. <laughs> Birds are maybe okay. Maybe they're just turtles in this in this world. Yeah, well, it's their it's their call sign, and then one of the famous lines from it is like, "The arm that carries the data that's your wing." <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, good. <laughs> I highly good. recommend it. It's really good. It's from Sam Patel. That sounds good. I think you mentioned that for the Hones playbook in the Veil, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that was a theme. Yeah. Like, parkour, parkour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking for my vice of doing faith. I don't really know what faith looks like. I don't know if you've come up with stuff like that, but um, I don't know. No, I faith, uh, I haven't I haven't gone <clears throat> through the vice sections. Eventually, it'll look like blades where it'll have the suggested purveyors for all around. Mm -hmm. But right now, I don't have that codified. Yeah, maybe it's just something like um, it's kind of like corporatized and tied in with like the three pillars, like you're talking about. So maybe there's some danger there of just like getting too involved with that and then having somebody find out what you're doing, really mm -hmm. talking to the wrong person, whatever, something like that. I don't know. There's, there's definitely going to be a faction that is going to be um around the worshiping of water probably because it's a scarcity mm. here so there's going to be something like that i know but they'll they'll probably be three or four things that hit on the the faith vice just like in blades but that's the only sure. thing that i have going on right now okay so yeah you can you could make it whatever you like <laughs> nourish, <laughs> nourish. <laughs> she's gonna worship um uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The oh. one data terminal that's connected to the internet. <laughs> nice. Well, you can hack satellites too, right? But it's always a mm. risky role. Um, if you guys want to do the same as what Yoshi did, that'd be really helpful. If you hit the top right corner for my settings, the little gear in Rule 20, and then change your display name to your character's name and their alias uh, pronouns and then character yeah. name uh, or player name that would be 
great so that whenever anyone's in a scene with you, they can just quickly glance and see it. I would say do it on Hangouts with the toolbox, but it doesn't work. So <laughs> that's nice. Is anybody else uh, good with their characters enough to get to the action dots or talk about what they are yeah. thinking? I, I pick my move. I'll, I'll say that quickly. I pick conditioning so I can push myself to do one of the following perform a feat of physical force that verges on superhuman or engage a small gang on equal footing in close combat as my starting special ability. Cool. And then. Yeah, I think I'm ready to kind of walk through. Um, okay. So um, her name is uh, Ye Ji. Uh, kind of a 70 year old Korean woman, um, craggy wrinkled skins, kind of like your, your kind of Korean grandmother kind of character. Um, she, uh, heritage wise is, well, background wise is underworld. So right. she's been doing this for a really long time. Her skills though have like depleted over time. She's 70 years old. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that kind of is what puts her sort of at, at the base as far as like the game mechanics are and that kind of thing is that like um yeah she's lost a lot of that edge that she she used to have um she heritage wise is forged and i think this is kind of the catch is that like both in that area it is geographically uh there's geographic havoc as well as uh biological um and so she has some kind of disease that is uh killing her on top of, of the age factor as well um, and so she's kind of uh, uh, come here, kind of like seeking like that one, one last big thrill, trying to set that up, like a, a sort of like one big score before she dies, essentially. Um, she just not, she's not looking for a cure. She doesn't think there's a cure. She's done yeah, oh. enough bad things in her life that, yeah, uh, she is, she's ready to end it or she's ready for it to end. Um, but she, she wants one last taste of, uh, the good stuff. Uh, and her vice is gambling. I think she, if this makes sense, like she would actually like, because of her underworld connections would like bet on other scores. Um, so maybe there's some kind of underground rings that are, uh, gambling rings that are based on like what other crews are doing. Um, so she, um, puts money down on those types of things and, and I don't know, maybe they get a, a cut of the score. It's kind of like a financing thing for some of that, or uh, maybe it's just like an inter-crew kind of thing as well. Um, think through that as the things play out, I guess. Sure, that sounds great. And what was your move that you took? Um, what do you think makes sense? <laughs> <laughs> um, for which one? That's one thing I could, that? I am kind of okay fuse, yeah. I'm kind of Cheers. okay with taking pretty much anything here and making it work. Um, but if there's something that you think is kind of like fitting what I'm going for here, I would. Let's see. Um, well, if you picture her as pretty cunning, then maybe ambush. Um, all in the wrist would make sense. You're not affected by quality or tier when you bypass security measures. You've like seen them all. Maybe you even like helped write all this crap, right? Sure, yeah. Um, Maybe that makes sense. Or even flaunt and vaunt. No, I don't know what potency. Oh, potency just gives happen. you more effect. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're going. To, yeah, I think pretty much all of this stuff. You could see it as yeah. Like, Maybe not reflexes. It would be fun. I, I, I would like you to take reflexes later on so that we're sort of like anti-ableist, right? She's all like, oh, I'm over the hill and stuff. And then suddenly she yeah. has reflexes and she can like fuck people up real good. I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could definitely happen. Um, let's do... Yeah, for now, let's do all in the wrist. I think that makes sense. Sure. And that's really powerful. You bypass all quality and tier. So it's basically like an equal chance to bypass any security measure, which is pretty insane. It'd be like, cool. yeah, it, I think it reflects your, your knowledge and stuff. So it should be good. And 
the Steve. <laughs> yes. So maybe Steve is not a common name anymore. Uh, yeah. So he's only like really known by that. He's the Steve. Um, but he's actually uh, born and bred foundation, maybe like literally bred foundation, who knows, um, with a labor background as well. Um, and I think he got into being maybe volunteering for some uh, experimental cybernetics or something like that, right? Um, and has been uh, learning to actually like self-repair, that kind of stuff. Uh, and right, that often needs like uh, um, replacement parts that are not easy to come by, and thus slipping off into the more uh, illegal uh, domains. So that's maybe the origin story. We're further along by now, and I think he's someone who's uh, kind of hides his um, uh, working origin past by like pretending to be more than he is. Um, and his vice is, uh, I was thinking stupor. I think maybe some kind of technology was developed to, well, if we need to put people into long-term sleep, right? Um, I don't know if that's used still or if, if it's, um, illegal or like it's you can get access to it under un, under under the table basically and it's basically just like yeah if I'm not working my favorite thing is put me into like a pleasurable coma state where when I wake up I don't even remember what I was dreaming maybe uh, or maybe if I you... overindulge I do remember and have weird versions who knows right so are you saying that you're the cyberpunk flatliners? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> That's funny. Cool. I like it. Okay. Um, so as far as action dots go in this game, uh, I've changed it up a little bit. You put three down and just like in the core of blades, they want you to put one dot in what you feel reflects your character's heritage, one dot in what you feel the character's background reflects for the dot. And then the last uh, well, the last two is normally in blades left to you to put wherever. In this one, you have the one to put wherever, and then the fourth one is optional, and it ref uh, reflects a piece of cyberware that you have installed and the fictional positioning you get from that cyberware. So if you had a cyber eye, for instance, you might put it in study or survey because you're better at that, right? In the final version of the playbooks, the there'll be like a separate column on the right-hand side just for cyberware. So you're aware of it when you're triggering the moves, you can play to your, your cyberware. But for now, we'll just have to remember. Um, and going forward, when you get more cyberware, it actually causes you to permanently reduce your stress until you put XP towards it and recoup it, showing that like there's a tax on your body that you need to recover from later on. And yeah, so 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 the um, the first or the uh, the initial point of cyberware that we can spend doesn't uh, incur. The stress, permanent stress no. loss? No, it, it did right. before. Uh, like, I think last week it did. Yes. Yeah. That's how I'm playing it on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it did before, but um, I I think it's better if it doesn't so that it's not sort of implying like a, a handicapped to cyberware thing going on. Yeah. Um, so this way you're whether you have cyberware or not, you're in keeping with everybody else who does or does not have it. And then going forward, it's the simulation of the tax on your body and getting it. So it's, it's meant to be like, um, maybe you're going on a mission later on and you have jewels, the currency in the game and you don't, uh, and you want to like, have some cyberware to more easily do your mission. You could spend the cash jewels to get cyberware and kind of do a push your own luck where you get an action dot, but you reduce your stress. 
and then it kind of gets incremental from there. You could recover from that one, but the next time that you get a cyberware, the second piece there, or the third piece, if you got one initially from character creation, it taxes an additional two, and then the third one an additional three. So it's yeah. uh, it just further complicates the stress system so that people with system mastery have to do more work. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, sorry about that. I, I changed it uh, like a few days That's ago. That's cool. <laughs> Everything's changing so fast because I'm doing so many play tests a week. Um, so yeah, if you if you want cyberware, put an extra action dot and just be aware that it's cyberware. And maybe I don't know how you maybe in your notes put uh, which action dot is reflective of the cyberware, so that when you hit it uh, in action in the fiction, you can use the fictional positioning and describe your cyberware doing something cool, that kind of stuff. If you want cyberware, what kind of question is that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a purist. Yeah, I, I was about to ask, so can I take the uh, stress uh, stress penalty to get another action dot at the character creation? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Otherwise, it would just be, in this game, it would be three and then the additional thing is the cyberware for the fourth dot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, says the torque who can craft them anyway. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Gave the system. I want all the action dots. <laughs> so once people are done action dots, let me know. And then you can choose a close friend and one rival on your sheet. And we can do crew. I'm finished with my action dots. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So choose a, after you're done the action dots, choose a friend. You choose the up arrow for somebody who is a, a close relationship, good friend, lover, family relation, etc and uh, choose another on the list who's your rival or enemy. Mark the downward one on that. I did that too. Whatever, Darren. Okay, you're just a keeter. <laughs> I did this, we did it like three hours ago, so so, yeah. so fresh. <laughs> Darren played in the game yesterday as well, so. Mm -hmm. Head of the game. Yeah. Um, Peter, how do you feel about me having, well, not me personally, but my character, yeah. <laughs> having um, a like romantic relationship with their rival? Interesting. So it's like a, is it a friendly thing or does it lead to actual like deadly circumstances? Hmm. I'm thinking like, <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm like Mr. and Mrs. Smith <laughs> sort of competitive. <laughs> okay. Well, see, like mechanically in the game, the thing uh -huh. with that is just that uh, when I want to, I can use a rival to complicate your engagement roles and interfere with your missions and stuff like that. So as long as you're okay with that, then I would be okay with it. Because yeah. they, will, they will, will be looking to fuck your day up sometimes, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fine. Because, uh, yeah, maybe it's just, like, that's part of the history of the characters, and maybe it's not appropriate to say, like, they have a good relationship now. Yeah. I'm fine sure. Sure, yeah. And then, yeah, you could do the, like, R.C. Keel thing and be like, I also sleep with them as my vice, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I guess I have to change my bias. Yeah, I'm a complicated person, <laughs> all right. I like to sleep with my enemies. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, though. Let me think about that. Mm -hmm. How's everybody else doing, action dot and friend wise? Good. I think I'm good. I got, yeah. I got my action dots. I, I definitely have a cybernetic eye. That 
that Starcross tattoo is definitely over my eye now, and that eye is now replaced with a cybernetic eye. <laughs> nice. Does it look like a normal eye, or? Um, I think it looks like a normal eye um, from like a distance, but like maybe if we're like standing really close to together, you can see that it's it's not. Um, I, like I imagine it as something where like I can. Uh, it's more than just the eye. Like, I think there's probably some like port or something where like I can export video, like it records things. And so like, I can uh, like save video that I've seen. And also it like helps me like uh, analyze things. So like it gave me a dot in uh, survey basically um, to cool. kind of uh, like be able to look at details in the scene and like kind of figure things out. Cool. And so is it like a Blade Runner thing? In the darkness, there's like a, that red residue thing on the eye, so people know you're a replicate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Like, I, I think there's definitely like, uh, it allows me to see a little bit in low light, but it all probably also gives me a way that like, if yeah. somebody in low light, they look at it, they can see it. Cool. Everybody else is good? Action dot and friend wise? Yeah, I think I'm all set. Cool. Yeah. And so, um, Mike, you haven't played before, right? So Correct. when we're about to do a score, what you'll do is you'll choose your load. There's light, normal, heavy. Okay. Light is people can't tell that you're basically going to a job. Uh, normal is like they can tell you're packing. And heavy is like you're the matrix people going into the lobby with all those guns and shit right Got it. and uh so all of your items you don't choose them now they all exist in a state of potential where you can use them at any given time on a job and you would just mark the items as you use them and you can only mark as much as your load okay so don't need to do anything with your items uh, if people are familiar with Blades in the Dark, there's still Devil's Bargain, but it's called a ripple. So a ripple effect, something happens later on. And it also hits on sort of like the scarcity of water and myth, myth all uh, stuff like that. So let's see. That's done. Let's do crew creation then. Alias looks. Yep, seems like everything's done. Cool. So first thing you're going to do is choose a reputation. And this is basically just what people have initially heard of your group. Uh, it, there's ambitious, brutal, daring, honorable, professional, savvy, subtle, and strange. And the important thing to know with this when you choose it is that uh, when you work towards this in the fiction, you get XP for it. You can always start a new reputation based on what happened in the fiction of any given session. But uh, especially for the first session, you might want to be working towards one of these goals. Just so, so you get the XP for the crew. So there's ambitious, brutal, daring, honorable, professional, savvy, subtle, and strange. How do you guys think that you do your jobs? I mean, professional is the obvious one, right? Otherwise, like the crew, like the crew sheet is cleaners. So you would hope they'd be professional. Yeah. Well, you could also be subtle or savvy, right? Yeah. I, I kind of like professional. And I think with like the three underworld characters, I think that makes sense that we would, in practice, be pretty professional in that world. Mm -hmm. Is everybody it, okay? I think point? this all also says something about us that we're doing this for the money. Right, right. Like we, we're not like idealists or something, or like maybe someone is uh, in secret, but uh, well, at first is, glance. Yeah. Th that's the image you're projecting anyway, right? To everybody yeah. else. Right. Cool. Okay. So choose professional. Somebody, uh, if somebody wants to take possession of the crew sheet. I can right. if, you, if, if nobody else wants. Sure. Whoever wants to just be marking this stuff down as you go. So you're professional. Um, for your base, or in Blades, it's called a layer. 
where do you guys think that you are situated? Um, the restriction for this game is that you do start in the roots. Uh, I want all the players to start in a, a green zone roots area to illustrate that you are all uh, climate refugees. So where do you think that you have been? Um, to give you an idea, the first crew that we were play testing with the wired ones, the vice dealer people, they chose like a their front ish place is out of the blue oolong tea shop <laughs> there. Uh, so it could be whatever you like. For the blades suggestions, it says a half sunken grotto, abandoned watchtower, unassuming back rooms of a merchant shop. So that's what those guys went with with the tea shop. Small abandoned house, rickety tin shape, uh, roofed shack, a junked rail car, stuff like that. It could be whatever you like, but it's probably since you're tier zero and don't have much money, it will be someplace not very nice, most likely. <laughs> It also kind of depends if we if we want to be living there, then we need to keep that in mind to pick quarters later. Yeah. Right. If For that I go too. Yeah, Darren is very much in the quarters. <laughs> okay. I think it's because, an important first upgrade to take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if we don't take it, then it could just be that our quarters are the back rooms of some place or mm. right. yeah. yeah, you could have a front or whatever, like a yeah. shop. Especially if you want to be professional and you want people to like meet you in a place or whatever, or you meet them somewhere else, that's totally fine as well. But it depends what you think would be interesting in the fiction. I think maybe if this is like the green zone where there's all these refugees are being shoved, maybe there's like a, a community space or like an area near like a community garden that we've like taken a part of. Ooh, are you guys all gardeners of a common space? <laughs> I think we can be responsible community stewards as well as hired Oh, yeah. Men. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. Awesome. That Reminds me of like, the constant the, uh... gardener. <laughs> so we're called the gardeners? Oh, wait, that's really good. <laughs> what if we're called the constant gardeners? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, um, Mike? Um... Yeah, I mean, I could see like the garden kind of making sense as well as kind of like a gathering place or maybe like it's part of like a bigger park that's kind of a gathering place for like the underworld elements and that kind of thing. So, um, mm -hmm. especially sort of especially because like when you upgrade your, your base, right, the interesting thing is like as it becomes hidden and secure and stuff, it would be really cool in the fiction because you could just like, uh, we could have a camera following you into the garden and then you would just disappear, right? People don't know where you go or where you sleep or how you get there or whatever. You're just, you're a part of the garden, right? It would be, it would be cool. It would be good fiction, I think. <laughs> I like it. Sweet. Okay, so mark that down and choose your hunting grounds. Did you, you guys haven't had a consensus on that yet, I don't think, right? There's accident disappearance, murder, ransom. It could be something else too. Those are just examples that you could choose from. So if you have a different thing that you want to go for, feel free to it offer might, that. Might be worth looking at what we're good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have a fuse that infiltrates, right? You have an edge that's really good at violence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the torque, so crafting things. And the haunt, who's good at also like infiltrating and hacking, right? Yeah, yeah. Like... pretty heavy on the tech side, actually. Mm -hmm. Disappearance or accident? To go from those examples, it sounds like we would have the skills to like make people disappear. Yeah, it seems <laughs> like you could get it to them, right? For sure. And also it might be a good thing to aim for because just like in Blades, if somebody dies uh, who has nine nets that are not part of the underworld, they are aware of it, right? Like they go off grid because they're dead. Yeah, and if there's a good explanation for why they died, like a con convincing one. I like yeah. that. That's also challenging to play 
come up with like good convincing hitman like accents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People listen to yeah, for sure. So you want accident or disappearance? Do people know that they're like dead in the end or they're just like these people just disappear? I kind of like disappearance uh, better than accidents. Um, like I imagine that um, if there's definitely trackers, uh, I, I don't know how they go outside of the city, but like since there's a couple of us that are forged from like outside, maybe a lot of it is sort of like, oh, they disappeared. They left the city. They left oh. shelter one and they're gone and never return. <laughs> nice. So you have contacts in the forge and you just like make sure that they're alive when they cross the boundaries, then the right. signal dies because they're gone. And then who knows what happens to them or whatever, right? Cool. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of different ways to go about disappearing people because at the end, the thing that attracts them is technology and you guys seem to be good with technology. So <laughs> cool. So for now, you can put disappearance and if it ends up that you're working towards something else, you can add an additional one or change this in the future. But for now, we'll just uh, do that. So let's see. You chose your hunting grounds. Uh, why don't you choose your upgrades first before we do all the faction stuff? I think that would make sense. So you have two pre-selected things, insight and prowess, which means that when you have a downtime action to train, you get two XP in those two things instead of just one, which is pretty good. And then you have two extra things that you can assign to, to whatever you like. Just bear in mind that the two, um, if you do cohorts or add a new type of cohort, uh, it takes two instead of just one. So it would be all of your upgrades spent in one go. So, yeah. And I know Darren likes quarters. So we had a strong voice for quarters already, right? Yeah. I also have, I think. That I also means maybe... we're roommates. Yeah. <laughs> At the garden. So that's important to keep in mind. I it's think mean... I'm being subtly influenced by Final Fantasy VII, but I also think like a vehicle, like having a like a private train car or something would be neat. <laughs> like a very small part of Final Fantasy VII, but there it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was thinking um, with how much focus on tech we have, a workshop might be nice. Mm. Um, so that like we have a place to like develop new tech or work on things and- uh, Yeah, long-term project-wise, it would be exactly. useful. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't say no to that, <laughs> playing the door. Yeah. So you can sleep know. and work there. Good, you're already a part <laughs> of capitalism. <laughs> Secretly, I, was gonna say, I think that makes sense for community space, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so awesome. are you are you going with that then? Quarters and workshop? I'm yeah. good with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Cool. That was easy. And you start with we cold, tier zero, no rep and oh yeah i should explain jewels a little bit so in this setting the prison is people that are forced to do manual label and they craft jewels if you think of uh have you ever if you've ever seen glass work being done where it's very malleable and they uh, mold it into a specific shape and then it hardens and then it becomes the glass work it's kind of like that the the more skilled laborers craft those shapes which are called jewels and then physical label charges those into uh, the technology that we use today in this setting so your the jewels power your technology to your weapons and then huge crafted jewels below buildings and stuff are the things that charge those um, there's also a bunch of eco technology and stuff like that but probably not in this district it, for instance like corporate headquarters have um what should we call it oh, i can't remember the technical term but it's essentially paint on the building that absorbs uh solar energy and uh they can power their whole building like that um but in 
this district that it's very like low tech stuff. So all the taller buildings here, you can actually see the old school uh, solar panels up there. And what that means though, is it's a little bit of a dangerous district as well, because the sun is so powerful in these days that if you get caught out in the open, it can actually like have a very detrimental effect on you very quickly. And one of the factions actually called Manufactured Light uh, creates a drug called Screen, and it's basically like an EpiPen that you inject, and you're, it starts emitting like this protective sleeve over your skin to protect you from the sun. So that's one of the complications I can throw at you during a job, for instance, if there's different things going on. I could always have like uh, solar panels change a little bit and the sun's on you guys and you need to inject Screen, and I take up your resources, that kind of stuff. But that's the the type of setting that we're going for. And um, so tippers and underground people that are caught, when you're in jail, you're doing free labor for people charging these jewels. And it is also the primary commodity of that because it comes in so varying amounts of sizes, right? There's huge ones, small ones, everything. And also I needed something that forge communities would actually give a shit about and and like see as a commodity. So it's inspired from the wind up girl where uh, these communities also need jewels. They need uh, power for their technology. So it's something that you can trade whatever you want with whomever you need. And uh, they can be as big as small as we need in the fiction. So does that all make sense? Cool. Then let's go to you guys pissing people off. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay. So, yeah. Do, do, do. Let's see the community garden. Let's see who would be angry at doing. Essentially, your, your hunting grounds, when you establish it, there is a faction that was already there or is wanting a little bit of a take from you guys. I think you're not close to the basin. Let's see. Let's do. Yeah, let's do the split peas. I think you've pissed off. The split peas is a faction. Uh, I'll just read the thing. It's a consortium of gene hack engineers and farmers who joined the underground black market and started policing themselves. Rather than work for corporations under a situation that barely allowed them for survival, they rebelled against Nourish, which were their employers beforehand. And now what they've done is started a Green Mile, is what it's called. And it's a different city, in, or it's a different street in the district every single time. And it's basically a black market where you can come and buy gene-hacked goods that they sell instead of Nourish. So for people like you, who maybe don't want to ingest um, you know, the gene hacked product and water. These are like cleaned stuff and they're the ones behind that. They're a tier two uh, group and not too much is known about them as yet, but they're like a rising power essentially. And I like the name, the split peas because so, <laughs> they're gene hackers. But let's see. So um so they claim the area and you decide how you deal with them. You can pay them off, give them one jewel in exchange for giving you room to work, pay the faction two jewels as a show of respect and gain plus one status with them, or keep your money and take minus one status with them. It is up to you. Also bear in mind, as we go through this crew sheet, there's gonna be more of these factions and you only start with two jewels. So yeah. And each time, essentially, there's going to be an option to give them a jewel to placate them and satiate them and stuff. So spend your money wisely. So because we only get uh, at maximum minus one with them, that's yeah. something we probably, if we want to, can still like handle in fiction and try to smooth things over with them. Um, yeah. I don't know how, how you guys feel about them. Like, I don't always need to go uh, into conflict head to head with every NPC faction. That's boring too, I think. Yeah. Um, I think 
I think either of them makes sense because I think it would also make sense if they have this sort of like mile set up that maybe part of the community garden is from that. So I think it would make sense too if we like gave them some money to be like, let us have a little space. But also I think it makes sense that we moved in. We're like, okay, we need to like smooth things over, <laughs> make them feel better later. Yeah. I mean, then I would tend to what saying, well, then we'll give them all of our money and get plus one with them. And actually like, <laughs> right. And then they one, like you. Yeah. yeah. Either or. Yeah. Because then we could be like, okay, there's their special task force that like they might be a, a good, good employer right off the bat for stuff. Yeah, like uh, they're and, you can bet that one of their their enemies is nourish as an actual corporation, right? So because they're the ones yeah. that rebelled against them in the first place. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what other like potential groups we might want to fund or like yeah develop alliances with and this one seems like pretty much in our wheelhouse yeah do we want to spend the two jewels on getting plus one with them maybe like yeah, angle, towards, <laughs> angle towards a very very quick plus two with them in, in game or something like that sure. just be aware that the one of the final questions is uh i think mine is two with a faction then too right so Whoever that one is, they'll be pissed for sure. <laughs> they won't be going to war with you, but they mad. I like this idea too that this kind of like fiction this is bringing in. How we're like, um, this is like an agribusiness narrative, <laughs> <laughs> and we're like supporting local farmers. I'm really, yeah. Into it. <laughs> yeah. So, do you wanna you spend all of two jewels? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so plus one status, cool. So remember when you're doing disappearances, you get plus one D to gather information rolls and a free additional downtime activity, which is gonna be real helpful. Special ability, you got upgrades, you got... Um, okay, so now we'll do contacts and the way it works is... Uh, oh, sorry, we need to do the upgrade stuff first. So one faction helped you get the upgrade and one faction uh, was screwed over when you got an upgrade. They don't like you, and that's the minus two status. Um, so there's another one. One faction helped you get an upgrade, and you'll get plus one status with them. And one faction is the minus two people that they, they really don't like you. And I'll, so I'll tell you a little bit about the other factions. There's cryptographers, which are just like the group of... Um, uh, hackers and cryptologists who sell software hardware in the city. There's uh, the coil who are dippers. And basically a dipper is somebody who um, there are constant streams of information that come out of the information headquarters and they dip into them and kind of steal their information and then sell it. Um, let's see. There's flickers, which are basically there are, uh, PIs in the city for hire for varying groups of people. They could be like uh, doing low level stuff and high level stuff. And their thing is that they disseminate smart paper to people and try to educate the public on shit that's going on. They're called flickers because all of their wear, um, they're, they're basically like, if you think of Ghost in the Shell, the camouflage wear. It's like that, except there's a flicker before they they turn on and like disappear. So the the colloquialism is that they're called flickers. Uh, the Krokai stigma are horticulturalists who were driven to shelter one. They're like very uh, secretive, and uh, they're they do all of the sort of specialty. Um, not gene hacking, but actual gardening and stuff like that in uh, the white district, which is like where all the rich people live. It's pretty on point. <laughs> the Red Leaves are a group of thieves and antiquarians who operate a pawn shop as a front in order to unravel uh, more lost knowledge. So they pay for people who are scroungers to go out and find like old hard drives and technology and stuff like that. And they are looking for a patron at the moment. 
Carrion is a tier four group that are almost as high as, um, whatchamacallit, as corporations, but they never get to be tier five because they uh, were built up by their own. Like they never seem to claw enough power to get to tier five because the corporations don't want them there. And they're hired mercenaries that have worked their way up the food chain. Um, split peas we already know about. Sentinels are the forces on the ground, the, the um, whatchamacallit, the police force. The mirrored are people who are like actually wearing mirrors. They have no real identity that people are aware of. And their message is that they reflect the visage of their oppressors back at them with these mirrors. Um, they have hidden headquarters. Nobody really knows too much about them, but they have recently escalated to violence against people. Whereas before they were kind of like flickers disseminating information to people. Now they've sort of radicalized. Constructed Chaos is the all femme presenting cycle gang. So like think of an Akira gang, tier one, that are just starting out. They just got their cycles and they're sort of like stirring up trouble. Manufactured Light is a group of former porters, those people who hook uh, glaciers and bring them back for drinking water. They used to do that, but they... The word on the street is that they captured a scientist who developed the formula for screen. And now they're more of an institution because they disseminate screen to everybody and are kind of like a very situated and growing in power because everybody needs the drug. There's the Porter's gang and uh, there's tracers. And those are the ones that are good for now. The other ones are not quite done. So what do you think? I think um, Red Leaves could probably help us get a workshop set up. Sure. <laughs> That's like a quick idea. <laughs> that works for me. OK. So take a plus one with Red Leaves. And, you, and one of the factions was screwed over by the upgrade, um, one of the upgrades. And you have a minus two with them, unless you give them a jewel you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you think pissed you pissed off with uh, getting beds, basically, right? Mm. Or, uh, or, yeah, it could just be encroaching on somebody's space, right? So yeah, I feel see. like the the crypto rafters of the coil. Because we're kind of like, we're pretty savvy about getting information and knowing where to get into things and that kind of thing. And so I feel like maybe like, yeah, we kind of like moved into their turf just thinking like, ah, like, I guess I shouldn't use turf because that's the a technical term. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of moved into their, their area kind of we're like, uh, if we get this, like, who cares if we upset them? Because we don't need them. Okay. We're arrogant about that. Yeah, sure. we got the scoop on them on something, right? Because sure. we're still too small time to get on the map for no rush or something, right? They probably mm -hmm. don't care uh, uh, about us at all, even though we're like kind of helping uh, their enemies. Sure. So coil minus two. They're a tier one gang. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So they're tier one uh, stronghold for people tracking it and red leaves is tier one we cold oh you guys are, are clever you've got a tier two that are that really like you that everybody else is just tier ones basically yeah like the only tier ones that there are <laughs> nice um and finally pick your contact and one faction is also friendly with the contact. One faction is unfriendly with the contact. And you'll get plus one, minus one appropriately with that. Hmm. Who is the contact that you like? Well, a slide, well, by the way, in this one is clearly also a, a nod back to Blades in the Dark. But uh, they're the people that can kind of hustle you into different districts if you're... Um, like basically like a coyote or whatever. Right? Okay. And awesome. uh, auditors are people that are looking for 
people who are screwing up, like using uh, black market technology that isn't regulated and eco-friendly, uh, people who hoard or protect tippers, stuff like that. District Sentinel is just like the local police and a forge liaison would be helpful for that disappearance thing that Yoshi was thinking of. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's literally a liaison to other forge communities and maybe they're the ones that are commuting in the cities, right? So that might be helpful. And then a tracer, which is the people that hunt people like you for whatever reason you have a relationship with them. I feel like that Forge Liaison probably makes the most logical sense for like what we've established, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather say that as a slide if we have to move people through districts before they we disappear them. But I mean, yeah. I, I like the slide has a lot more like tactical advantage <laughs> in some yeah. way. Uh, if we are, yeah, playing the game. Um, so yeah, I think it's just a matter of yeah, story mm -hmm. versus mechanics here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm good with either. Both of them make sense to me. Matthias, you're a tiebreaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of like the Forge liaison for the reason of, well, if we make people vanish, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Like maybe they don't even die, right? <laughs> No, they just like it's like witness protection or something. <laughs> just like you're gonna start a new life. I don't yeah, want to go. Exactly. That's me. Goodbye. <laughs> Everybody feels cool with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So if we're going with that, the Irish pronunciation of the name is Keon yeah. or Keen sometimes. We also get to pick a special ability, right? Uh, yeah. That's, yes, you still get to, to do that. <laughs> Thank you. No special abilities for you. And so let's decide who's friendly with the Forge person. Do you guys want a faction oh. who is uh, the positive person to that like them? to be outside of the city or a faction inside of uh, the district and city? What is more interesting to you? I was thinking, just as you were talking, I was thinking maybe the porters would be really good positive contact to have since they move in and out of the city. Mm -hmm. OK, so do you want to take plus one status with porters then? And people that don't like the forged liaison. Hmm. Maybe that could be like, um, I can't remember if you have a faction set up, but for like the auditors in general, that since this is like multiple abuses of like jobs and <laughs> positions. Mm hmm maybe it makes sense that they would dislike this like contact who's who's like manipulating all these other groups sure i like that so auditors are tier three and you've got a minus status with them probably not great mechanically for us but <laughs> <laughs> hey it makes things interesting mm -hmm. Cool. And then choose your special ability and we're good. So we automatically have like the, the storm caller special ability, right? Yeah. So actually the way it works is, uh, I think you might be looking at an old one then. Oh, it's called military know. grade now. <laughs> I'm just looking at the PDF you sent me. I know, but I updated it again. <laughs> so that's why I sent another Dropbox link after it. Um, but it's still the same move. Yeah, so you can choose. that. That is sort of like the appropriate move that you have for Acts of God, but you can choose any of them from it. It's just sort of the most likely one that you would take. 
to define your relationship with acts of God. Because so, the, the way it was written, uh, it looked like, well, you get this one for sure, then you can pick another one. Oh, okay. No, yeah. So this is the most likely one that fits your crew, yeah, but you can choose any one. of them. Yeah. So the one that comes with it is the one that um, you take stress in order to uh, destroy an act of God, but you could also do the one that outrun or outmaneuver them. So if you don't want to interact with them at all, you could take stress to disengage with one entirely, which is like a pretty uh, good move because all the other ones are um, moves that you can only do after you've surmounted as an obstacle. And this is avoiding it entirely as an obstacle. Uh, shifters extract data from acts of God. Comets uh, can con uh, extract it into a viable form of fuel and wired makes drugs from it basically. So you can choose any of those. Oh, so that's another axis, actually. What? Because there are also the other special abilities for crews. Yeah, so you can choose any of those starting of abilities oh, for okay. Acts of God for this crew. And then the one that's on it already is just like the one that you probably okay. want. Based but we on couldn't go know. with Deadly if we like saying like, well, let's not care about Acts of God that much. Like that... That's not how you, oh. you see what I mean? Like you, you could choose any of those I'm okay with okay. for those we, starting abilities. We start like if we just did only the cleaners yeah. playbook, we would get both military grade and also something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So That's you, okay. oh, yeah. So yeah, that, that was my original question. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Out military grade for one of the other ones. Yeah. So you get, if you want military grade as your starting act of God move, then you get that. And then you also choose yeah. your starting special ability. Yeah. Sorry. But in terms of the act of God move military grade, you can choose whatever starting ability you want with that and then choose any ability from your uh, cleaner sheet. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how we destroy Acts of God, but I think it might just follow more if we switch to the Clippers one to outrun or outmaneuver Acts of God. But for whatever. No strong feelings. Yeah, it just defines your relationship with the Acts of God, basically. What you want to be doing to interact with them. And an Act of God is basically, it's a colloquial saying in the setting, but it's... Uh, picture like an environmental disaster that has been uh, radicalized by the climate change, right? So it'd be like a tornado, except it's like a massive, crazy electrical tornado or whatever, right? Or we just did yesterday, they took on like a volcano underground that was spitting up like lava and stuff like that, and they had to take that out. So those are the types of things. It just depends what you want to see in the fiction the most, basically. I feel pretty open about the Acts of God thing. If anybody has any favorites. I mean, I'm a little bit lost, but that's okay. Um, I'm all right with either keeping military grade or switching it to the fast and furious the one from the clippers i think both of them make sense i think the military upgrade um sort of makes sense with a bunch of like the tinkering and things that we have that maybe like um we especially with some of us being from forged and so on that maybe we've had experience and that's the hard one or the hard one experience that we've had out there um i could see that we definitely have something to like overcome it Mm -hmm. mechanically the way acts of god work is i have a clock that i tick every time that there's a downtime or a mission and when it gets filled an act of god happens and you choose how you interact with it so you could be out like one of your special missions once it ticks down is you could go out there you could kill it and that would be the score you'd get the money from that or you could also kind of use it as cover for your other missions, right? Like an act of God happens and you're like, sweet, now let's hit this group because we know 
they're not going to be moving anywhere and stuff like that. Under the cover of a dust storm, we moved to our target, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it would still be an obstacle that you'd have to overcome, but you'd probably have more effect because it's happening. So it's just showing in the fiction that um, these the radical elements of climate fiction and climate change are happening on the city, whether it wants it to or not. It's something that you can't avoid in the fiction. Yeah, I'm happy sticking with military grade. Sure. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, pretty much everything is a little bit malleable in the first session. If we get to the second session, we're like, eh, we're not really feeling that. Maybe we switch. That's completely fine, right? Just like with all of the options. If you go get to the second session and you want to change your special ability or change your action dots around, I think that's completely fine as well. And then, so take the military grade and then choose your uh, special ability and then you're done. Here's a way to make this super easy. Uh -huh. um, uh, because just picking deadly is super worth it <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> getting the bonus action dot for everyone uh, that can even push potentially push our edge up to a maximum rating of three somewhere. Um, so that's very powerful. And also because we have uh, two more tech sided people and we're playing cleaners who we'll get like more competence in that direction as well. Unless someone has like a neat idea, for example, for why we don't take heat when someone vanishes or gets killed. Like, yeah. Right. Those other ones are interesting, definitely, but. Deadly can just be like yeah. it makes a super competent as uh, a starting point. I feel. Yeah, I like deadly. Let's do it. Okay, so mark deadly, and then anyone can mark a extra action rating and trace ghost or combat. Tracing is the hunt um, skill of this one. So to find somebody. Okay. To trace them is the colloquial term of like taking a sniper round at them, that kind of thing. Ghosting is the physical-ish stat where you're trying to like be stealthy. You're supposed you're going over obstacles physically, um, stuff like that. And combat, I think, is self-explanatory. You're combating somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you're good, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have a gang to start out with. So we don't have to worry about edges and flaws. Yeah. Another difference with healing in this game too, is it's a little bit more swingy. Um, if you're healing in this game, what you're doing is essentially taking a, a recharge. You'll notice that's an item in your um, sheet. And what that does is it kicks your, um, your nanites into gear to start repairing you actually. So when you inject yourself with a recharge, you'd, essentially roll a d6 and it's the same healing rules but you can also in, in downtime for instance you can spend one action and as much jewels as you want to inject yourself with as good a of like a recharge as you want so you could spend like four jewels for one downtime action and then roll four dice and have the results of each of those dice have an impact on your healing clock if that makes sense that's something we can deal with later, but it's important to note that you have a recharge on your item, but it takes up two slots. So if you're going light, that's like two thirds of your resources to heal some of your harm, right? And yeah. So does okay. anyone have any questions? I changed my special name. <laughs> okay. Um, I changed it from the harm to haunt because I think haunt's just too interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was thinking for the physical modification, what it is is that haunt um, 
And they have some like skin modifications, so it makes it into like a sort of polymer. So like they look shiny, like a, like a like plastic kind of, and that just makes like essentially they're more modifiable. So maybe they can they can use like they can put in cybernetics easily, <laughs> something like that. Okay. I don't know how they sweat, but I don't want to think about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever. There. Whatever. <laughs> doesn't matter cool so why don't we take five uh since we've been going for an hour and a half we'll come back and then we'll jump into the fiction to see what you guys want to do okay cool so come back at 42 okay
Hello, hello. I think we're all back. Yeah. Aaron message saying you got kicked out. I got back in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Being being kicked out is no good. No, I like turned away and then I looked back and it was like your computer went to sleep, so you were disconnected. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. That's that's rough. Yeah. Oh, Yoshi, are you back? Oh, just eating off screen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Call out. Okay. Um, let's see. Do people have a specific idea of what they want to do first, or would they rather get like a opportunity from me, or or what? Oh, I like the idea of trying to improve our relationship with split p, split p's, split p. Sing mm -hmm. I love it singular plural. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Everyone's okay with that? Yeah, let's go see what's going on. Okay. Yeah. It's right now. Wait, didn't you pay them? So you have plus one relationship? We did. I want an even better relationship. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was just I was just wondering if you meant red leaves, right? Because you have a negative relationship with them. That might make sense, but <laughs> Okay, well, it's whatever you want. <laughs> no, no, let's let's improve with the split peas, and then once we get good enough, we'll just take out the red leaves. Okay. Yeah. Wait, I have us as having plus status with the red leaves and minus status with the coil. Did I miss something? Yeah, red leaves and coil, I believe. Oh, are both negative? Yeah. Okay, we, got it. I thought we had positive red leaves for the workshop. Oh, okay. What what did you mark down on your cruise sheet? <laughs> no, we didn't really. Oh, you didn't? Oh. Uh, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was trying yeah. that paper and I yeah, I had the red leaves was the workshop and the coil was who we upset when we got the quarters. Okay. So yeah, we'll go off of what was written down then. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I thought that people were tracking it in the thing, in the factions. The coil okay. were what tier? Oh, just I'm adding it now. Uh, coil is tier one. Red leaves is tier one as well. Split peas is tier two. And then and yeah. auditors, right? Yeah. Auditors are tier three. Yeah. We are minus one with the auditors and minus two with coil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got that for now. Cool. And you want to improve your relationships with the split piece, right? Yeah. You want to be tight. Tight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's see. Let me find them. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. So let's start out with, uh, well, let's start out with, do you guys invite them to your place or do you set up a meet with them somewhere else you think? Because it might be a good opportunity on screen to describe this community garden if, if it's there. I like that. Yeah. And we're giving them a tour of the garden space. Yeah. Well, let's do the 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 um, painting the scene then. <laughs> let's let's gauntlet it up in the in the blades. Um, why don't each of you guys give me a detail about the this community garden for what you're picturing there? Also, if it helps. Um, Colloquially, a lot the one of the most grown flowers and stuff like that is saffron because it grows in really crappy uh, conditions. So ironically, um, I don't know if you know anything about saffron, but the stems in saffron today are very like coveted and expensive, and now they're like very inexpensive and used in a lot of dishes in this setting because they're overgrown. And just like as you might expect, um, if you went to 
Asia now the cherry blossoms are just going, right? Instead here, especially with the Krokai stigma, in the massive towers of the white sector um, further down, they grow a lot of saffron and they've kind of gene hacked it to make it look even more blue. Right now it's kind of like bluish white uh, petals, but they've made it kind of like really deep blue. So you can imagine that blue petals are continually falling no matter what um, season it is because they've been hacked to grow year round. Um, and it's sort of like a status symbol. Um, so you can kind of see that uh, the more deeper the um, saffron leaves are, the better the hack. And generally you'll see them floating off of one particular uh, building slash tower owned by the super rich or whatever, right? So it's sort of, they employ the croci stigma to get the best uh, blue deep flowers uh, to compete with their neighbors. Um, so yeah, if it helps. But uh, yeah, why don't you go around, tell me, like, we'll have a tracking shot of the camera coming into the garden and tell me what you see. We'll go in order of the hangouts. So Darren, do you want to start? I would be honored to. Um, I, um, I imagine the garden, I'm thinking like a rural, like a city community garden space is like maybe in like the front area then there's the buildings that surround it all around it. So maybe walking through the garden, there's like, it's a bunch of like trellises and it's a lot of like very um, um, like hardy crops that like can, can be used a lot of things. So there's a lot of beans. Um, um, I, I can't think of any other crops, probably like potatoes, <laughs> a melon or something. <laughs> I think maybe, well, yeah, yeah, I think that's my detail. So it's a lot of like good, like farming crops. And there's probably like people dotted throughout who are working on the garden. Cool. And what do we see from... I'm going to start using people's um, character names to start getting into that. What about the Steve? Well, I definitely think in the center of it, we have like this pavilion. Um, it's slightly elevated with um, where you can actually sit down, uh, have like cushion benches uh, around it. And, but instead of it being like, like we know these pavilions always are like sheer white instead of that it's a um a lighter shade of orange to be like the complementary color to the uh always present blue um uh blossoms that are um surrounding it right and yeah and this like this might also be the one where we like after the tour might sit down to talk business. Cool. And what about Yeji, was it? Or Yejai? Oh, you're muted. Right, the digital button or the physical button with one press. Uh, <laughs> what, what was it again? Yeji. Yeji? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that there are some, uh, maybe kind of like off in the corners, there's, there's these trellises, um, where, um, there's been attempts to maybe grow some bigger, thicker plants. Um, maybe that they don't look like they are like producing all of that much like harvest out of them, but they are certainly like producing like these sort of like private areas, um, where maybe shady conversations can happen in the shade. Um, and yeah, so there's, I would say like that those are kind of like off in the corners. There's maybe what, like three or four of those. Cool. Yeah. So I think the, the other thing is, um, 
towards like where all the entrances are. Um, I think there's probably only a, like a couple of entrances and exits out of the community gardens, but since it is a community, there's probably some on like all different sides. Um, I think they're kind of lined with uh, pots like that are um, sort of isolated for like the root structure isolating pots that have a bunch of like herbs and stuff in them in there, things that people would commonly want uh, to like just spice other things up. So like rosemary, sage, mint, um, a bunch of those things. That, and those are all distinctly at the entrances. So one, you can tell where the entrances are and aren't. And also the people who just want to grab some rosemary can just go grab some rosemary and not have to like go all the way in type thing. Have you thought about this? <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, so we get all those details as the camera pans around, right? And we start following along uh, behind a, like a shape of a person. It looks at, at first, it just looks like a mass of people like undulating and moving through the city streets. Um, but slowly as the camera starts crawling in, it starts centering on an, a specific person. Um, they're lithe. They are cloaked all in green. And how do I describe the symbol on the bag? It's a circle with sort of a line through it. Um, but it's like a lot more stylized than that. And the gear that they're all wearing is completely like a forest green except for the white of that symbol on their back. And at first they have a hood up and um, it is sort of like the cyberpunk material that you normally see where it's sort of like clear through-ish. Um, and as, it, as they're walking and they turn the corner into this garden, maybe their hand brushes across uh, some rosemary, right? And we see that they have like quite dark skin and the camera pans up a little bit to the back and we see that they have the haircut where it's like all very short everywhere except when it starts coming from the back forward with the side sweep. I really like that haircut lately. So I use it for everything. <laughs> and they have, uh, they look like the Pinterest uh, picture that I've put up there. So they have, um, how I don't know how you would describe it, but those like huge hoop earrings and dark skin. They've got like the bar in their nose, uh, sharp features, and um, they've got like two dots uh, in the middle of their forehead. And you know them to be Jasmine because you're already friendly with this group, right? Uh, she, her pronouns. Now that we see them on screen, we know that. And you know from the uh, like word on the street for NPC business, basically, they're a brilliant scientist, wise, talented, and a reasonable person. You know this already from their reputation. Okay. So um, I think they stop for a moment and like uh, breathe in the uh, garden. And it's like we see like a solar panel move a little bit and the errant light. Um, comes and hits her and we see it sort of like sting at her face a little bit and she moves forward because we're just educa educating the audience of the movie that shit's going down with the sun right um they move to the pavilion which i imagine is maybe like white and cracked a lot it's got like um I, I, I really like wood that shows its age and that it's been through some stuff like when you go to really old houses um it it has character but it also looks very worn right and they sit on maybe maybe there's two different benches and she sits on the opposite side of what you all are doing do you want to why don't we introduce the characters by what they look like in the pavilion and we'll go from the opposite order of before so why don't we do wait don't tell me i want to learn everyone's names cross what do you look like or what does she look like yeah so she has like um I, i'm going with like maybe like a brown skin like medium brown um not super light not super dark but like short like dark brown blackish hair and a mohawk um, and you can see that she's wearing her outfit is kind of like 
workman's clothes so like jeans and um like a shirt like no frills or anything like that it's just like um like everyday stuff and you can see that like her like on her knees and her boots and her hands um which are gloves you can see like dirt like she was obviously just doing something in the garden like actually tending to the garden um, and then probably got some sort of word that, that uh, Jasmine was coming in and so left what she was doing and uh, is, has come to go sit down on the bench. And you can see her like taking off the gloves that are like still covered in dirt and like kind of setting them down. Cool. And then let's go to, I wrote it down, Yeji. Uh, um, so I think, uh, in contrast to Cross, um, there's not any dirt or anything on uh, Yeji's clothes. It looks like she, she's maybe, or I am uh, uh, sort of making it look like I'm doing things. Um, so kind of like picking through plants, but it's obvious that like I don't have a lot of like, yeah, uh, finesse with, um, with horticulture. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I see, yeah, I see Jasmine coming in, and that is uh, a perfect ex excuse to stop pretending that I that I care about gardening. Um, <laughs> and so I kind of head over that way. Cool. And what about the Steve? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm sitting um, on one of the benches, kind of uh, uh, leaned over. I'm actually nursing a cocktail in one hand, and I'm dressed in a suit, and I um, have a clear cybernetic implant right on the, my forehead, but it's dormant now, like it's turned off, like, uh, or, right, it doesn't do anything, we might not really know what it actually does. Um, for player level, that's actually, like, uh, where my... Uh, one action dot in heck comes from. Like I do have a uh, processor there for uh, interacting with uh, things directly. Yeah, but I'm I'm sitting there like super casual over the top, right? Like uh, legs crossed, um, right? A little too slanted in the body language over the side, and sipping my drink. What are you wearing? Uh, I've got a, a suit on, a uh, like black suit with a um, uh, white shirt. And, like, yeah, this is a business meeting. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> cool. Okay, and what about a gabrache? Um, um, I imagine there's, like, a small... I, I set up a small tattoo shop, like, attached to our workshop or something like that. So I think gabrache was in there um, tattooing someone. So they come out and Gabriel is usually in this like that trademark skin look. And then they've got on just like maybe like three or four or five layers of just fabric. That's not, uh, there's no silhouette to it or anything. So Gabriel like belts it. Um, it's like utilitarian and like effortlessly stylish. <laughs> um, and the Gabriel is also bald, so, but they're covered in tattoos. So there's like decorative tattoos um, in place of hair and that goes down their neck, on their arms, just kind of like covered in it. Um, and then, yeah, get, they get the message that Jasmine's there. So um, there's probably someone like half tattooed laying on a table and Gabriel is like, I gotta, I'll be right back. Let's take a break. What is the tattoo as you like wipe away some of it? Uh, well, I think it's um, it's got to be a, a data runner. So it's, it's a data tattoo, right? Mm. Um, do we want to keep doing birds? Whatever I, you like. Yeah, I I like birds. I think they're getting a crane. It's like a crane. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I like that. Cool. And then so you you all congregate by the pavilion. Um, I kind of like that for some reason there is like the sound of water in the garden, but because it's like a scarcity, there isn't actually like water to be seen, right? So just to give like a sort of calming presence. And I think Jasmine looks really like amenable 
right? And yeah, just remember why is talented reasonable when you're dealing with them. But so do you imagine that you've sent for the meeting uh, in order to like, do you think that you sent word saying like, we want to um, like get in your favor or by way of the fiction, this is just something happening that will do that already for the faction. What's more interesting to you? I kind of yeah. like the idea of us, like for whatever reason, having like a piece of information that might be useful to them. And then like, Hey, we know this might be useful to you. We want to be in your good favor. Um, we think that doing like X job or doing something like this might be helpful. Uh, so that like, if we're the ones inviting them here, like we have a reason to invite them here or so on. Sure. So mm -hmm. as part of their, was somebody going to say something? Oh, okay. I thought I just talked over somebody. Cool. Okay. Um, as part of the, Faction clock, I definitely know what they're after. So let's see. Yeah. So I think what the information that you got was that um, you have a location of somebody that they were looking for named Merrick. And they were, they're somebody who is still under nourishes employment somebody that like didn't get out with them and they've been unable to locate until now and so do you do you tell her that you know the location and all that kind of stuff so let's say that happens in the fiction right and she sort of like stiffens at the name um not trying to like betray that this is something that she really wants but you can tell as you know as subtle as she is, it, she still like betrays it en enough that you know that this is information that she wants. And she says, um, if you truly want to help us, we are, we are being watched always. We know this. The only time we are safe is when we are in the masses of the Green Mile. But if you truly want to be friends and she like lets out like a subtle little smile right um she i would like for you to disappear merrick and bring him to us you don't have eyes on you but we do this this will gain you the favor that you're looking for Um, so I guess uh, EAG kind of jumps in and says, uh, well, if there's, if there's one thing that we do, it's uh, definitely disappearing people. Um, and she, uh, at this point as well, just kind of like coughs, like hacks up like a bunch of like stuff into like a scarf. She has scarves all around her neck right now. Uh, and she kind of like uh, coughs that up into the scarf and like pulls that scarf off and like just kind of like sticks it in a pocket. Mm. I, th I think Yasmin sort of like inclines her head as if she like knows what's going on, uh, but it says nothing. I do agree uh, with my colleague here. Um, and I think this is a good match. Um, we, we do not get seen. We make things happen and are quiet. But on the other hand, we do not have the clout for any official business so um we'd really like to not just call this our home but have this uh, entire garden officially signed to our names and what i'm angling here for is like yeah let's get into a, a mutual business here and we kind of need someone to i don't know vouch or get us into the line that we also can claim this turf is ours yeah yeah, I was picking up on that. We'll say if you do the mission, then you'll it'll also be a turf mission. That's fine. Yeah. Uh Gabriel says, well, usually we get people out of the city, but you want them to stay in. You need them here in the green zone. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> So what she's done basically, like you were you were picking up on like they really need Merrick, we're gonna get some favor, and you probably expected that they would just send like an operative or hire somebody to do it, but instead she's like turned it around on you and been like, Well, prove yourself, you'll get our favor, you'll get this turf, but they basically have no like if this is to go sideways, it can't be tracked back to them pretty much, right? <laughs> I think I just sort of like nod at like everybody who's going on there and I pick up the gloves that are covered in dirt and just like take them and put them on and like it's time to do work type like attitude of just like pick them up and getting going back to doing work. Thanks. Okay, so I think we can just move forward in time to y'all deciding what kind of plan this is, right? So uh, for people who haven't played Blades, what we'll do is we're going to, by way of flashbacks, show your competency and what you've planned for on the mission. Uh, right now, all we need is to select the detail of what you want to do, which is just to say, what do you think would be the most interesting thing to do? Um, so generally what you'll do is you'll select a type of plan, which you can find at the bottom of your um, character sheet. There's teamwork and then planning and load. So take a look at that. There's assault, deception, stealth, AOG, social connection, and transport. All of them right now, just like your items, exist in a state of potential. And then you'll find information getting to, or pointed towards that specific mission. So right now, uh, you'll just select the thing that you most want to do. Then we'll move to like gathering information about it. And then we'll move to actually just cutting right to the action of doing this specific thing and assume that you've already prepared for it. So what are people vibing on? Well, I've leaned hard into deadly stealth, so stealth probably makes sense for me. Uh -huh. Thanks. So yeah. I can... Go ahead. Yeah, we, we do want to keep things quiet, right? Yeah. So I agree there. But it would be nice to use this to maybe show off some a bit of the city. So it could also be a transport thing. Mm. right? Maybe like picking them up and kidnapping isn't the big deal about the score, but actually then uh, moving them. <laughs> but Yeah, I think that makes sense because to, to Gabrash's point, like we normally get people out of the city. And so this will be an interesting way to disappear someone within the city. I could also imagine that um, going along the lines with the transport is if they're still being tracked with like the, the nourish tracker, that like part of the transport is like giving, like giving them some sort of drug or something that um, helps like get rid of the tracker or flush it out cleaning of the cleaning them yeah exactly. <laughs> nice. so like like part of it is like we just have to move around for a long time um if, in order to for that for the signal to drop okay hmm. so do you want it to be a link plan where like the first part of it is you like get to them and then the second part of it is extracting them or sense. like uh, we kind of already have fictional positioning in that we know that you know about Merrick and where he is and <laughs> stuff. So it just depends on what you think is interesting. A linked plan. Uh, the only downside is with the engagement role. One of the things is if it's overly complex and stuff like that. So it could add towards that depending on what you're going for. But it just depends if you want to hit on the infiltration side of things as well. It might be like good to structure it that way, but for the terms of uh, like, we can assume that you know where Merrick is being held and it could be at a specific time. Like maybe you have information like Merrick is gonna pass through X place in the city at this time, or maybe they're always holding him at this place. It's whatever you guys want. Maybe we could just do an um, 
Well, I guess it would still be a link plan. I was thinking like there's some a small step we could do to prep for the mission, but I guess yeah, that would still. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. The um, I think what what often gets mistaken is uh, it's the we are characterizing the engagement role, not what happens after that. Yes. So maybe this is more like well, we get to him in a stealthy manner. Once we're there, then we have to do the transport stuff uh, on camera. Sure. So both can be true, and this could just be a stealth uh, engagement role, and then we need to move him. Mm hmm. Right. That, that makes sense. I'm good with that. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is it stealth or deception? I think stealth. Yeah. Just getting think we're trying to yeah, I don't think it's necessarily trying to trick them into something else has happened. Yeah. I think it's it's, it's just be them. before they notice or when they notice whatever, he's gone. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so entry method. Let's gather information about that. So I kind of want to like, since we know more, roughly the location is like, I definitely want to be like going around scouting and then with like, like my cybernetic eye, like recording video of the place um, to try to like look around. Basically I'm looking for like what's what they might be weak in. Like if there's places where there's cameras that are looking at things, but where are the blind spots, that type of stuff. Okay. And is anyone helping on this? Um, I think I can. Yeah. Because I could probably do some like remote stuff. Um, for my hacking. Yeah. Are you going to. Well, yeah. Normally, hacking would be a little bit risky depending on how you do it. But if you're there plugging into the building or something and then like trying to do stuff, I think that is a cool visual. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine just some sort of like remote, um, like helping watch out oh. while, while um, Cross goes around and does their, their business. OK. I like that. OK. So let's see what will be. So this is going to be a fortune roll? Yes? No? To gather information, yeah. it's, it is an action that you're doing, but it's essentially a fortune roll. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I've pretty much pictured this as survey. Uh, of what it is, um, but I'll. I've only got one in survey myself, but if I'm being helped out, it bumps it up to two. Okay, cool. Cool, and here we go. Notes. No, I'm just going to leave that blank. A five. Cool. So you get almost complete information essentially. So um, I want to cross the streams a little bit. Let's say that you need to extract it from the blue oolong. I like that. <laughs> um, they're being held at, let's see. Do you have any, did you, do you have a preconceived uh, notion about how you got the information from Merrick? About Merrick? Uh, who did we piss off again? We pissed off the data. Um, the... Yeah. You pick. You pissed off a uh, coil, I believe, right? Coil. The I, I totally think this part of the reason that that's how we got the information. That's uh, part of why they're they're mad at us. Is we got like, it was something that we did that we got some messenger or extract that they were supposed to like pass to one person or do something like that. But we got it and we're like, oh, this is actually useful to us, and we're just going to keep this. <laughs> oh, nice. So you you. <laughs> Or like gonna do a mission where you pass the information to somebody else, but you looked first. You're mm -hmm. like bad post office people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like held the letter up to the to the sun and you're like, oh Merrick, that's a good word. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. I like that. So um yeah, let's say that you got intel that was leaked from information where they were saying that like an auditor came across whatever uh, bits of data saying that like Merrick's nanites sort of flash for just a second at the blue oolong before they disappeared. And I'll, uh, 
I think I have a picture of it. Basically, the blue oolong, uh, when I picture it, is it's as if you went into like David's tea. So on the right side, there's all these like options of different teas and canisters. So you can smell them and look at them and like buy them and stuff. And tea is really expensive because you have to put it in your water and um, water is a scarcity. So it's it's a very much like an indulgence. It would be like buying really, really high-end chocolate now or something like that, right? Um, and away from that wall, there is sort of like a steampunky looking uh, barista type setup. So there's always somebody at the um, helm of it where they're kind of like packaging the tea and cooking and doing all this kind of stuff. And they sometimes work as the person who's operating it as well. And the way that you can get in is, uh, this is actually kind of funny because uh, Lou said this detail when I was uh, in their game. And it's really funny because it's an actual true thing that I can say now. But he said, uh, behind this is sort of like a beaded area. And the beaded, the beads are sort of like, um, what you might call it? It's a misdirection-ish thing where they're sort of also secure. And if you go through moving them in not the correct way, they kind of become a uh, cutting edge and can like slice at your hand and hurt you and stuff like that. So I think you actually see one of them go through and you know the pattern, right? Go through. And just as it is swept aside behind it, you see the workshop that has um, a whole bunch of boxes and stuff like that piled up against it, but there's two garage looking things that you could potentially get open. And that would bypass that security thing too, right? If you come in from behind, but those are the two entrances. It's just like the front entryway and the beaded area that since it's a secure place, you can't really see what's beyond it, but you could imagine that what you need and where they're holding Merrick lies beyond that place. And then uh, your secondary option is to go through the um, sealed, uh, I'll say, because you guys are infiltrators, uh, the, the garage looking things. And it's as big back there as if you could hold like a couple cycles, uh, like motorcycles for clippers and stuff like that. It, that's as big as the space could be. It's also mechanically, it's also as big as your workspace because that's what they took. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah so do you see that what what kind of fiction do we see when you guys are like that's what you learn but what do we see in fiction for how you get this knowledge are you posing as customers or like what do you yeah guys I, I think it's totally posing as a customer i think part of it is around is like just doing an outside perimeter of the building so like maybe the person inside uh doesn't necessarily notice but sees uh but like we see cross like circle the whole building like videotaping things and then walking inside to like uh propose as a customer um and just like looking and smelling teas and doing all of that type of stuff to to pose as a customer um and just like watching keeping an eye out for as somebody goes into the back to go uh, through the be beaded curtains. It's all on film now, or all on data. It's all captured. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And what about Gabrish? What are you doing in the fiction? What do we see? Yeah, I think, um, let's see. If I have to hook up something. I think maybe Gabrish is, um, Gabrish is like at the corner just outside of it um, with like, I just don't, I don't have a handle on technology here. Can she have a laptop sort of thing? Like a tablet? Is this totally, where... yeah, okay, okay. totally. Yeah, I think Gabriche is probably just like, um, I think she's just plugged in with like a tablet and maybe like the, the danger for Gabriche maybe is that like, that looks very surreptitious <laughs> to just plug into a building, but like, Probably it connects into like a camera feed or something inside the blue oolong. So I can kind of just watch. I have like eyes outside of my own and then I can see what's going on with cross inside also. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Across the way too, you see 
uh, I'll do another crossing the streams detail, which is uh, across the way you see a place that sells synthetic honey and it's got like a, a street sign that has like a beehive with like a mechanical bee that's going around it in like different patterns and stuff like that. Um, and you're still in the roots. It's still kind of like a shady area. So I kind of even like in the fiction, maybe you like plug in to the laptop and you're doing all this stuff. And that's when Cross comes out with like a cup of tea and puts it there. So it looks like you're just like working or something, right? And then we can cut to uh, what you guys are doing on the job even if you want. Yeah, did people want to do other things? Well, so here's the question. Does this, uh, does it make sense for either this recording or the hacking or some combination is kind of uh, transmitted live in some way back to the gardens? Uh, well, what like, is that possible? For? So kind of what I was imagining is that uh, Yeji is, we don't want to have Yeji there if she's going to be sort of point on actually infiltrating it, but she is perhaps um, watching and making sure that like, okay, like, I completely understand the way that these things path together so that I will be able to like sneak in and perhaps um, if there's some type of audio connection saying like, hey, like check this for me. Um, like I didn't get a good look at that. Can you go back in and like um, try and get me a little bit better angle on that? And I kind of imagine her uh, in, in sort of the visual is sort of like standing in the middle of the garden doing almost kind of like Tai Chi exercises kind of thing. Like just sort of like, she's sort of like physically like miming her way through um, the different things and trying to understand like how she will need to navigate that. But that could certainly be sort of like later or if it if we do think it makes sense to have a live feed, I think that would be nice. Yeah, it's fine. It's just, there's no internet. So you can still do local area network connection okay. stuff. So that's totally fine. You just can't like, you don't have access to essentially what is now proprietary information that's all this could cool. just be the intercut of um we see this and what you're actually engaging is with is the uh video data that was brought back yeah that and this is this is the this is the yeah the montage of us um uh doing the planning where we don't actually communicate what's the actual plan it just looks like we're planning <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah Especially because Cross has the eye that can record and download the info and stuff too anyway. So totally. Okay, so we are doing stealth, trespass unseen, point of infiltration. We know it. And what, what way are you guys choosing, by the way? Through the beaded area or to try to get in through the back entry? I'll leave that to our stealth professional. <laughs> <laughs> I can just like go straight in through the beads. Just to be meta about doing the uh, engagement role, I'll give you the questions. So that way, because this is basically the force score that we see on film. So I want it to be like cool and illustrative of your team and stuff like that. So you can plan for this and essentially game this heist. But going forward, I won't let you know. <laughs> um, so you get a die for being particularly bold or daring right? And minus a die if it's complex or contingent on many factors. Uh, if you expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest, you take plus 1d. If the target is strongest against this post, then you take minus 1d. Uh, typically, so that would be like hitting them at their HQ, which you're doing, right? But if you have the fictional positioning to have circumvented that, then it wouldn't apply. Um, can any of your friends or contacts help you on the affirmation? If so, plus 1D. If enemies or rivals are interfering, minus 1D. And other elements like tier come into effect. And they're tier 1, you're tier 0. So um, it, I no, like normally I could minus a D, but I won't because I want this to be really cool. <laughs> so when you're planning, just think of that, right? Um, Yeji would definitely like to take on the challenge of these beads, but maybe as a getaway, we work these garage door things, the garage area. Um, it might not make a lot of sense to try and get back through the beads, especially with uh, whoever we are, with, with Merrick, um, which you guys think? 
Yeah, I doors. think that makes sense. And I think if there's like doors or whatever, um, I think that Gabri should be working on that, basically like setting up the getaway, right? Yep. Okay, so you're initially, so yeah, well for the, what we'll do is if your entry is through the front this time, when you're exiting, it'll be a flashback to you dealing with the back doors or whatever, right? That's how we'll handle that. So let's do the uh, engagement roll. If you hit your crew sheet, there's an engagement roll button for whoever wants to do these options. And we'll just go through it, just like I said. So is the operation particularly bold or daring? I think so. You're hitting them where they live, right? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty hardcore. Um, contingent on many factors, it seems like we know the entry point. We know how to get in. So no. Hold on. Who's actually doing the role? Yeah, exactly. I will. Yeah, who is who is doing it? Yeah. <laughs> is anybody I in can the if you like. So let's... go for it. Okay. So okay. I've got got the thing open. So we get one die uh, out of sheer. We're competent or something. Sheer luck. Yeah. And yeah. then bold and daring too. Uh, plans detail expose a vulnerability. It seems like you know how to get in, right? So three D. Uh, are they yeah. strongest against this approach? Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily. So they've set up some beads that are kind of neat, but otherwise not really, right? Uh, any friends and contacts help you? Does anyone have any people they think would be good? I was probably going to call on some if I was doing a flashback to get us out. So I, I bet I don't, that's... Well, know this is just like you can presuppose that you've contacted this person to help you if you want. If you have a contact that makes sense for this. I've got a contact that might help, but it's a, an enemy contact. So I'm not sure if that's a good uh, thing no. to, to bring in. No, that would be something that I would bring in. <laughs> <to scare you. laughs> so nobody has friends or that helps you with this, I mean? No. <laughs> OK. Not to get um, other elements to consider? No, I don't think so. So we'll do three. Three, OK. Bam, crit. Whoa. So a crit, you guys are jackasses. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll, it'll work very well for uh, us showing the competency of you, right? So a, a six starts you out at a control position. A crit starts you navigating through the first obstacle already. <laughs> so that's pretty good. And then you being in a co control position after. So whatever. All right. So... So the I think kind of the plan is um, that if, if I understood correctly or if I'm imagining this correctly is that uh, uh, Yeji, right? Is that correct? Is um, going to be actually the person moving in. Um, I'm not sure if Cross will be accompanying her. Yeah. And maybe um, it's um, Gabraish and the Steve at the back opening the getaway and we're having a vehicle there. I think that's, does that sound cool? But we still have like obstacles to overcome, right? We need to open the back uh, door and you need to get the guy and but we're in a good position to handle this. Yeah, does that sound good? Okay, so I think you're obviously choosing a time when, I don't know, you tell me, are you choosing a time when the uh, NPCs that are PCs are, <laughs> uh, out of the area or is it just like sleeping time or whatever is the basically the fictional positioning of you saying get Merrick at this time at this like place is it because they know that the PCs will have left and the place is like vulnerable ish or just because it's like at the time of day when they're sleeping or what what do you think I would say, is there is there a time that's going to be advantageous on the back? Do you guys think? Because I feel like Yeji is like pretty bold as far as this kind of thing is concerned, and so she's probably just kind of like, yeah, it's it's like lunch hour, so maybe there's a few yeah. like they're running short staff in the tea shop, like that kind of thing. Okay, so the place is like flooded with people. I mean. So what I was thinking yeah. is, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that could work. But um, 
maybe this is part of like the research that we saw ahead of time is that we're going like when the garbage trucks are coming. So there's a bunch of loud noise that goes on in the background that like could mask like an explosion or some activity or things that are going on. Like you hear a bunch of that type of stuff going on. Okay. So, okay. Well, okay. Uh, let's say them. So the garbage truck's coming and you want to go just like when it's really busy and stuff like that. Right. So we can even see some of the PCs probably like helping out front dealing with these customers and all that kind of stuff. And then we like see you guys surreptitiously going through the beads and they probably don't even bother looking back and stuff like that because they know that if somebody tries to get through in the wrong, it's just going to mess them up anyway. Right. Uh, but then we see you two. What are, what are you dressed as on the job? What is different about you and, and whatnot? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I would say like uh, Gage is probably normally in sort of um, like cloaks, dress, kind of, that kind of thing. Um, for this particular thing, knowing the beads, um, she is probably taking like slimmer, like um, and just kind of like civilianish garb, like she probably still has like a lean onto the scarves thing, um, and so kind of concealing her face, kind of a, like a desperado kind of thing. Um, okay. But otherwise, like it's like just kind of like slimmer fitting um, clothes, yeah, in whatever is the civilian style. Okay, so it sounds that like you like you have a light load, right? You don't want people to notice you. Yes, I would say that's definitely the case. Cool. What about Cross? Uh, same idea. I'm also going with light loads just because I think uh, trying to blend in with the crowd and trying to be something normal, so like at least what everybody else is. So I think like uh, the outfit that Cross is wearing is um, probably like a little bit of like loose fitting clothing uh to sort of like mask how muscular and strong they are but still gives them some like movement capabilities um type thing things that are not overly flashy but like also blend in so it's not like i'm wearing all black it's like oh i'm wearing like this like muted green shirt or whatever it is like so that i have colors so i fit in but i'm not like uh necessarily like standing out cool i like it and what about then we get like a shot that goes like around this establishment and then we see you guys in the back right what about gobresh and the steve what is your load what do you look like oh i like this idea with the the garbage trucks i think that um gabrish i'm doing a normal load because i think gabrish um has like a garbage men's outfit on so i imagine that as like a pretty bulky jumpsuit that has like room for like some crap and yes i think that oh, i think either um i imagine i'm either driving a garbage truck or i'm gonna call someone in to drive it <laughs> um but yeah so it's like maybe um you know that like dingy gray <laughs> there's a belt i feel like the has everything belted so Okay. Well, if you want a uh, truck, it would probably be acquiring an asset to use. I don't think you just have a garbage truck. <laughs> no. Well, I was gonna. I was thinking that would be the the um. The, we we the stole it. Back. Oh, we stole it. Fifteen minutes earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So when we why don't we leave that up to flashback? That will be yeah, interesting yeah. after this. Cool. So with the load selected, we see you guys slip through the beaded stuff, the first obstacle, right? And as you get through towards you is the workshop, and to your right is like at first it looks like nothing. It sort of looks like um a nook where there is the stairs coming down and then behind it there's like nothing but as you look further you see there's like a little um there's markings on the ground as if it's been slid so you can tell that it's like kind of a trap door looking thing and if you move it aside then you see that it's uh stairs going down into like a basemented area um and that's probably where they're going to be keeping people there is also like the stairs on the other end but maybe when you were 
checking it out before you saw that that's where um the front basically is right of their shop and stuff like that so all the stuff they're supposed to have is in there and all the stuff that's hidden is down there <laughs> cool so and as you you move down there it kind of looks like um what would it, it it not like a cave but all those things of like insurgent videos in like afghanistan and stuff when they're below the house where it's very narrow passages and like just those swinging dangling uh light bulbs and stuff like that they're down there and there's there's like one sort of grand room that looks like it is quite lived in it'd be like the living room of down here and then there's two rooms down the way. And just as you're about to move forward, I think one of you sees that there is like, uh, I think actually the, I think it'll be cross that catches it. It looks like it has the same um, replicant eye thing up in the top right corner like a camera ish and you recognize it because that's what your eye looks like right <laughs> so perfect it's up there and beyond i think you even hear um like scratching noises and the beating of something and we realize that it's somebody like banging on a door as if to like say like let me out basically and down below and you're in a controlled position because you've noticed the camera first and uh, are in a position to deal with it. So what do you do? Um, I've got an idea. So I think maybe like uh, I look over there and I have some subterfuge supplies, which I think part of that is just like normally would be like um, makeup and concealer and things to change your appearance. But like in that, I'm going to basically take some of like um, the dark makeup and uh, with an applicator is basically go up like underneath where the eye can is seeing out uh, so it doesn't catch me just go up and like paint over it and like sure they'll be they'll see like if they go look at the recording it all becomes dark and maybe they'll notice there but they won't have any recording of of us well uh, and this is ostensibly in the fiction gonna be like three minutes or something right yeah, like exactly. you guys are just like going in go down grab the person go up and then you guys open the doors and you're like peace out <laughs> right exactly yeah yeah. so cool. like by the time they realize that one of their cameras has gone black uh like we're already on our way out <laughs> nice okay i think you're in a controlled position and what action do you think it is that uh, you're I doing feel like this is prowl okay so you're gonna uh, it could be finesse too or ghost i think oh ghost is prowl i'm looking at the sheet and yeah ghost is prowl yeah but I, i'm thinking it's also finesse you could yeah. do it with too but uh it, yeah if you're gonna ghost um yeah i say control standard effect and do you want to ripple or are you going to push yourself or is somebody helping you the way it works, PS, is that uh, if you push yourself, you can push yourself for an extra D, or you can push yourself for extra effect, which is nice. So instead of standard effect, you'll have great effect. Yeah, I've got two dice in, in Ghost. Um, mm -hmm. So like, I, I'm all right leaving it at uh, standard effect and two dice. OK. Um, all right. And you don't want to ripple and you don't want to help from somebody else there? I'll take help, but I'm not. Like, I also don't. I don't like expect I it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily need it at two dice. Well, so, maybe. I don't maybe. know about that. <laughs> That's pretty uh, ballsy, I think. <laughs> really? I two, two dice. dice. Two dice is not that bad. Five chance of success, but six is the full success, right? That's true. So you're searching for sixes mainly. And plus, we ha we haven't really seen uh, Yeji do much in the fiction yet, so it'd be nice yeah. to see them help, maybe, or something. I'm just not sure how I am going to help this particular action. <laughs> well, in the fiction, it could be even like, um, I don't know, maybe you're, maybe you're looking through the beads to make sure nobody's looking when they're doing uh, it. Something along those lines, like yeah, a lookout kind of thing. Um, yeah. Or telling 
cross the info that she needs in order to do it be like you need oh. to make sure you get this spot or well so maybe maybe i am guiding her approach to it to make sure that she is off camera sure does yeah, that that's make good sense? For like me. kind of like keeping it maybe the camera's rotating or something like that and i'm kind of like um somehow just them. Yeah. like <laughs> how like yeah for down sure. there now like that kind of thing that's so yeah. three dice. Cool. I'll take Roll my it. bonus die. Ha, see? Told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, okay. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. I think, yeah, the obvious thing I think is that since these guys are ostensibly PCs or whatever, right, that there is like an additional camera on the opposite side that you missed that they placed in order to um, catch people going for the obvious camera, right? <laughs> so, and the way that you notice, I think, is you start like spray painting, and right on your hand, you see like a red laser of the red eye looking at you. And this yeah. is when I introduce resistance mechanics. You can say, nope, that doesn't happen, right? I am actually, yeah. I actually do notice that, and that doesn't happen. Um, and to do that, you would just say, I want to resist that. This is how I do it. And then you would hit insight prowess or resolve, uh, depending on how you're doing the resistance role for it. Um, sure. I think that, uh, I do want to resist it because I don't want us to get spotted right away. Um, but like, I think how it is, is just basically, um, I assume something is going to be like that. So like I have like hook, like put up over a hood or anything that like it removes any identifying like features. Mm. Um, so like, even as like, I go up to the camera to like blot it out, there's nothing that they can really identify from me. And so like, it's just the blotting out one, one thing and then like backing up without like any identifying features to where that camera can't see and then blotting that one out as well. Okay, so that sounds like insight to me, yeah, probably. That like too. Cool. So just hit the insight button, and it will yeah. let you do the resistance roll for you. Cool. So, oh, that's pretty good. You only take one. <laughs> one stress to do that. Cool. Hate that and stress. so then let's say that you, you get to the door that's being pounded on. You see Merrick. There are... Um, similarly dark skin and they have modified eyes so that they're sort of like yellow. Um, I'll show you the picture later, but they are incredibly attractive. And a, from like a PC that I played, uh, I'm playing in the other Blades game. I chose them and I was like, Jesus, I am like the most attractive like male I've ever seen in my life. But anyway, <laughs> so you get them and we can, we get you to the point where you're going up the stairs again. And that's when we cut to the back, right? With you guys trying to get the stuff open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do we see back there? You guys are trying to like, how are you trying to get these doors open? Uh, I think, um, I think we're we're like actually taking um, garbage bags kind of like out of the truck and mm -hmm. um, uh, looking side to side and then um, hunkering down behind garbage bags or something like that. And I think I'd be like, um, uh, all right, Gabriel, can you set me up making sure this doesn't cause an alarm? Then I can open the door. Uh, that's a way to game it. <laughs> Can you set me up? <laughs> I like that. Cool. I, would, I would be happy to take a stress to assist you. Oh, no. I think he's angling for a setup action. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so I'm, thinking, I'm thinking here right there, tier one, we're tier zero. So oh. you need to overcome or like the tier difference. And setup um, gives us a better position. Yes. And my idea in fiction is like, well, they probably have some kind of alarm if you just open this by, like, not the usual method. Uh, but maybe you can hack that, and I can then just do the mechanical bit of opening up the doors. For sure. Sounds so, good. Yeah. The bridge, so how like, what? I was going to say, they take out the tablet, and I think um, if there's, like, an outlet or a plug or something in the back, um, they're just going to, like, 
do some matrix business and <laughs> whatever that <laughs> looks like. <laughs> so, so what action do you think that is? Is that hack? Yeah, I think it's got to be hack, right? Cool. And so there, there is a tier difference. So right now it's going to be you're in a controlled position, but you'll have limited effect and you can push yourself to get standard effect if you want. Yeah. Um, do you have a devil's bargain? Sure. Um, when they review the footage, they'll notice that there is two garbage trucks that come today. The one that you're in and the one that later comes, the real one. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Darren's the worst. And just like everything I come up with, Darren's just like, yes. <laughs> Sweet. I will. Okay. So you're going to push yourself for, or the ripple is the thing that you are using to get the standard effect then instead of pushing yeah. yourself. And cool. uh, are you getting help? Mm -hmm. Maybe um, you're just covering them, right? So, uh, yeah, because if this is a setup that they are doing for me, uh, oh yeah, it might think, be weird to help. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, that's fair. Okay, so you've got standard effect for free. Well, kind of <laughs> <laughs> free right now. Yeah. So roll that up. Roll your hack. I promise I clicked it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it just Ooh. takes a while. So it happens, but there is some kind of complication. Let's see. You're in a controlled position anyway, though, so it's not too bad. Minor complication. Uh, just because we're short on time, let's say that the complication is that you'll only be able to do it for a little while. So on screen, we see that it's like, mm -hmm. there's like a progress bar of how long this is happening for. And it's like T minus two minutes or something. And then in your comms, you can be like, we only have two minutes, guys. <laughs> you know, let's make this happen. Yeah. Um, but it works. So you're set up the Steve. Do you want to get those doors open? Yeah, I, I uh, want to modify them. Cool. Basically, just okay. Open so that the automatic opening um, opens up. So I, I pull out my fine modification tools to um, get in there. And uh, actually, I probably have like some kind of um, uh, it's an actual circuit board where I actually do on the fly um, adjustments on it. Um, oh. So a very physical thing um, uh, that I've pulled out. So is it like? Uh, is it like you actually open up the circuitry for what the door is doing and you take out the circuit board and put in a new one and then hit like open? Uh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, yeah, I think uh, uh, that's kind of what it is, right? Like I open it up and I actually have like these little uh, screwdrivers that I go and I right. take this out, take uh, the circuit board out, look at it, and I'm like, uh, okay. And nice. then um, uh, swap it out. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so you and you have fine tools. You said, cool. Yeah. So I think you're in a controlled position. With, uh, are you pushing yourself? You, if you push yourself, you could get great effect from it. I think. Um. No, I think I'll push myself for an additional die. Okay. Do you want to ripple, or do you want to push yourself? Um, I'll push myself for it. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the doors come up. I've only got two minutes. I think it pops up just at the right time, right? Like the... Uh, it's just as they're coming up the store, the stairs, and that's when you see, like... Um, there is like a slight rustle. They've never used these doors before, so they're not greased. And it lets out kind of like a shrieking noise, actually. And uh, we don't, you don't know the name of the person, but there's like a young kid who looks recently like wounded, uh, hit in the shoulder, comes around. And uh, they're like just about to yell 
unless of course you want to resist consequences <laughs> yeah i think i do how do you um, resist that i I think I, I'm 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 I think I'm I'm kind of dumbfounded there, and I'm like, just punch them in the face. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not like, you, you don't want to resist the consequence of the squeaking metal grate. It's oh. the kid screaming. Yeah, yeah. I want to resist. Care. I want to resist the like. Um, I think it's actually uh, me actually like being like, wait, this is not well maintained. What a shitty job and i'm like actually to the last bit um by force of hand like um um uh, leaning into <laughs> making the screeching noise and then that kid looks um like it's right in front of me and i'm like ah and i still have like some tool in my hand and, like <laughs> I just crack him in the head <laughs> nice <laughs> okay so it sounds like maybe you're resisting with prowess <laughs> yes i think so too because you're knocking them on the head. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, Steve. That was mad. lucky with one eye. <laughs> yeah. So you don't clear stress, but or no. Yeah, it's I don't critical. incur stress. Yeah. yeah, but you don't incur it either, which is yeah. nice. So you guys aren't the worst, that's for sure. Um, and then let's abstract it to you guys just getting out, right? Like we see the other two people with uh, the person Merrick come out. You guys get into the. Uh, garbage truck, I guess. And Could later. I do it a little bit differently? Sure, totally. Whatever you so want. I'm. I think Yeji is a little bit worried about um, any attention coming in or even the timing. So I think she's going back out the beats. Um, and 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 that way to stop anybody who might be following to know that it was the garbage truck, like all of that kind of thing, as well as just kind of like scope out what the scene is looking like on the on the get out uh yeah, yeah i like i kind of even like you spreading some misinformation like some oh. thief some thief tried to just like some thief just knocked out this guy or whatever right to yes. like yeah uh, yeah yeah, and, yeah like, and, like a group of muggers or something like that yeah right? like uh maybe maybe you throw suspicion on a different gang like they're like oh who was it did you see who they were yeah i just kind of blend in with the crowd and i'm yeah yeah. Give some identifying marks of whatever other gang. Um, what well, what gang was it? Do you think, or like, what gang was it that you tell them? Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> All the power is in my hands. Yeah. The coil. I hate the coil for some reason. For some reason. <laughs> okay. So you say it's the the coil, and then yeah. you like disappear into the into the streets, right? And then behind the the. Uh, garbage truck leaves but we we do know that they are gonna follow up with the garbage truck stuff later cool let's do xp now and then we'll do uh, rep and heat and all that kind of stuff uh, next session does that sound good mm -hmm. cool so let's start left to right with hangouts um gabresh what's my xp gabresh or is it gabresh or gabresh uh, Gabrash. 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 <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, Does look like the most complicated name that I saw, you know. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind learning the names. <laughs> um, Haunt, did you address a challenge with deception or influence? <laughs> I would um, say yes. <laughs> did I? You don't think deception. so? I don't know. Do, um... When you were gathering information, that seems like what you were doing. You were like Think... hacking them, weren't you? Yeah. I was. Th I'm thinking of that as like very literal, like lying to someone. I guess. Uh, <laughs> Should I think about it more broadly? <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I don't it's think I'll ever get the... experience if I. <laughs> if it's up to me, though. <laughs> well, it's up to the group, uh, technically. So do mm -hmm. what do what does everybody else think? I think probably yes. I see that as deceiving people. <laughs> Hack or influence hacking is influence. That's true. And you did okay. that twice. So take at least one, possibly two, I think. Okay. Uh, did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I think 
everybody could take at least mm -hmm. two for drive. This is literally the episode where we learn what you're about. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. And uh, did you struggle with issues of vice root or traumas? No. No. Cool. No, I don't think so. And what about the Steve? Well, Steve. I addressed a challenge with technical skill. I believe so, yes. Yeah. And uh, we learned about my uh, about my root and my background. So that's three yeah. total. No vice of traumas coming. You don't think two for technical skill in mayhem? Uh, was you, I causing mayhem? Was just I mean, you, hitting you, a poor kid over the head? Well, that, yeah, like instead of yeah, resisting yeah. the squeaky door, you punched him in the face and knocked him over the head, right? With a thing. Yeah. I think, I don't know, it's up to you. I think it might be worth two, especially because these are meant to be incremental challenges to you. To Yeah, next time it's more kitchen. mayhem. It yes. won't be enough to just hit someone over that yeah exactly so it could be three or four up to you and let's see what about yeji um okay so i think i did address the challenge with self revision right? yes two for sure for that yep <laughs> do you want to give me one for coughing up in my scarf Oh, sure. As yeah, part that sounds of good. Heritage. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, or it could be, yeah, it could be either or. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think everybody will get two from that section just because it's like the thing that we learned about with you guys. Uh, it's like going to get maxed out for sure. So I think three or four again for you, depending on how you feel about it. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it was pretty slight. So yeah. yeah. And then I don't think I've really struggled with issues from vice comments. Mm -hmm. And what about what about cross? So I didn't really address anything with violence. Um, coercion, I don't really think so either. So I think I don't get anything from those. But I do get the two for beliefs, drives, and heritage. And I think that just leaves me at two. Do you think the coercion, maybe <laughs> tangentially, was the stuff with the cameras where, like, you were fine with being showing yourself on camera but then having prepared to not show them anything right uh yeah maybe I can, and we could even do a flashback to you wearing the outfit of a different gang even right, right to right. do subterfuge like, like the the hood that i have on the back or on there has the symbol of the uh coil yeah of course you guys are all coil all day <laughs> nice sweet <laughs> yeah so take uh take i'll take one Sure, and then two from that. And then let's do crew. Cleaners. Execute a successful accident, disappearance, murder, or ransom. Definitely, you disappeared somebody for two. Uh, contend with challenges above your station. Yes, one tier above you, so one XP. Bolster your crew's reputation, for sure. There'll be rep involved later, but you can take two for that. Express goals drives uh, essential nature of the crew too for that for sure. So two, four, six, seven, you can mark. And when you, uh, for the people marking XP on your character sheets, um, I think everybody knows this, but just in case, you can put your XP to whichever place that you would like. So you could put it towards your playbook XP or your insight XP, your prowess XP, or your resolve XP. And so if you put it towards playbook, then you're working towards getting another special ability. If you put it in insight, prowess, or resolve, you're working for another action rating in that. So once it's filled up, you could put it in any of the skills or the abilities below it, um, any of the traits. And then uh, in the final version of the game too, there'll also be an XP track for uh, increasing your stress, but the character sheets don't reflect that at the moment. And... Yeah, and I think we can do rep and all that kind of stuff next time. Uh, do people? I'll just I'll stop the recording real quick. <laughs>